Welcome, everyone. I am here with Darth Grader, Mark, myself, Kyle Mullins. We both have YouTube channels. We both like Star Wars customizable card game. We decided collectively that we had so much more we wanted to unpack based on the last conversation with Matt, who is comfortably on some vacation somewhere. So we just took the initiative to have a chat ourselves, uh, given how much we spoke last time. And also given the fact that I'm going to be out in Seattle near Mark. So I look forward to seeing him and we wanted to touch base again uh, prior to uh, hanging out there. So yeah, this is all right. Always down to talk cards. (laughs) Good to have you, Mark. I don't know what you're drinking there. Looks like liquor caramel. (laughs) This is from Costco. It's some, I think it's like lemon, honey and um, citron, whatever. You got like a sore throat or something. No, just a big batch of it. And you know Costco. It's like you, oh, you yeah, buy yeah. some, you get a whole vat of it. So I'm just trying <laughs> to down it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I get that. We like stock up on like all the essentials there too. Hmm. Um, okay, so Mark and I were talking. And what has been on my mind since one of our last conversations is something I've been thinking about this week. And I know we've gone back and forth on this. Um, but I wanted to talk about sealed products, specifically really sealed boxes. I mean, we can talk a little bit about boosters, but what is really like boggling my boggling my mind right now is when I'm seeing, you know, prices all over the place on eBay. Now, of course, we have this the sealed and graded tracker. So I have that sheet next to me and we're going to go through each of the sets and kind of get a sense of like the average and why that makes sense or doesn't make sense. And some of the key cards in there and uh, you know, where that's potentially going. Now I know on our last conversation, you spoke about sealed boxes and I don't know if this record or not, but um, you spoke about sealed boxes and the, the idea that people are specking on the box themselves. So they have no plans on opening it, but just the sheer value of boxes increasing in value over time. And we've certainly seen that over the last few years, if not the last 20 years, really. I mean, for those who bought really early, have really won out. Um, but on some boxes, the price has just skyrocketed. So high level before we dive into like all these sets, like what's your take, yeah, well, I mean, those are a lot of interesting points there, Kyle. And I think, yeah, certainly there's a few layers to it. Like, yeah, certainly if you bought boxes right after Decipher lost the license back in, uh, was it 2000, early 2000s, like around 2001, 2002, like you could have gotten pretty much any box you wanted for, I don't know, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, something like that. Something really inexpensive, maybe a hundred bucks for the really high end ones, like the episode one sets because they were really useful for gameplay and things like that. But yeah, I think a lot of people uh, are getting in on, on boxes for a multitude of reasons. And one is, I mean, well, the couple of reasons I can think of are one, it's kind of fun. Like there were only so many boxes made and everyone likes opening packs. So you can still have that experience of opening the packs. And that's honestly where a lot of the value comes in. And, and there's well, yeah, only so many boxes were made. They're not going to make more. You don't have to worry about it being reprinted. Like now with magic and that pseudo, reserve list reprint where they're making those like non-playable copies of some of the old cards like as much as we would love for disney to come and print more star wars ccg you know it's probably a pipe dream as far as that's concerned so in terms of that you know it was a very popular card game star wars is a great ip so it makes sense that you know if you're kind of a star wars collector of which there are a lot of those out there if you like cards it's kind of a natural place to go in terms of finding an invest or not investment. Well, I mean, kind of an investment, but yeah, if you want to put your money in cards, you want a sound place to put it, it makes sense. Um, and then beyond that, if you want cards that are in good condition, I mean, of course you run into the uh, issue with say Premiere, the, the first Star Wars CC set that was printed having dubious print quality at times. But if you want mint cards, you might be paying a premium, but at least you're guaranteed to at least have like as good as one can expect coming off of the printer. Um, you know, you do run the risk, say, if you buy like a, a set or a box of like reflections, maybe you get a bunch of like foil line cards in there. I mean, I guess you always run the risk of that, but at least you're kind of, it's a lot easier than uh, trying to find like near mint cards off of eBay. You at least guarantee, okay, at least they're packed fresh. Um, so it does yeah. put out some of the time on that that you might spend otherwise. Yeah. And that you, you bring up something else that, you know, um, because, 
like essentially when we're looking at these box prices, right? Mm -hmm. Like regardless of the set, it is safe to say that you can you can buy a completed set of one of each card in the set for a fraction of buying a box, right? So from the perspective of, oh, I'm going to get a box to like try and complete my collection or something, that makes no sense because there's so much product already out in existence that either you can build a second, third, fourth set with just the, the stuff that's out there, either through buying bulk or singles, which can get expensive. But I really would only do that if you're missing like a few cards. Um, I, if you were missing a lot, I'd say maybe doing eBay, like repacks might make more right. sense if for the, the person getting back into it or trying to, because I get these questions from people asking me like, oh, you know, I have these bulk, but I want to, I want to finish my sets. Like, do you have some cards from these sets and all this? And, you know, maybe they're start, start looking at like the box prices and stuff. I'm like, that's crazy. You yeah. Know? Like from, <laughs> that makes no sense. Cause there's plenty of product to... out there make a set by opening packs. I mean, you can do it and you'll have the, you know, the experience back in the nineties of opening packs, trying to make your set, but you're certainly going to pay a premium for it, especially, I mean, with decades having passed the people already opening this product, you know, there's only so much left out there. Uh, it'll be enjoyable. Um, but yeah, certainly if you want to just get a set, you're probably, it's probably much more economically feasible just to buy it from one of the many you know, reputable uh, stores out there. Yeah. And I mean, then you talk about, you know, the grading perspective, like I'm sure there's a, there's a bigger market now looking at these sealed boxes and stuff with the intention of, if I get this, there's a good chance I'll get high quality cards that will immediately be able to go from pack to slab, you know, in a good spot, but that doesn't guarantee anything because you've, I, I've definitely opened stuff on my channel as you've seen, and you have too. And uh, pretty much anybody else who's done this before, like you can get something right out of the booster that turns into like a seven and a half, you know, like it sometimes it's just got nicks and marks and foil lines. It's uh, besides even the centering before you even get to that, there's, that's there's all different kinds of flaws with these cards. And frankly, I'm starting to wonder if it's possible to get a pristine 10 star Wars customizable card game card. And if it is, it's one in a million. Yeah, with the, with the so on the note of the pristine ten, like I don't know if they actually are like this. I'd imagine they are. You could think of a bell curve, right? And you know, modern cards are probably out of the pack. Most of them are probably in, let's say, on a, a Beckett range, like a nine to nine five ish, right? Straight easy, out of the pack, easy, easily. Easy, but I'd easy. say for Star Wars, maybe it's like eight point five to nine, roughly, is kind of what you're expecting on most sets. Premieres kind of like got a wide variation but maybe like roughly around an eight to an eight five but with a lot of variance usually towards the lower end um and um i think so there's a couple of things one yeah you have I have that chase and uh sorry i just lost my train, train of thought no you know i mean you're definitely yeah. right like the centering is a concern but even with like corners being nicked and you know, bends and stuff. This stuff happens out of fresh packs. Like I've definitely opened them to the frustration of, of all. Uh, I guess some of our, our hard learned lessons, and I know we've had discussions about this before. So one of them is that in my mind, before having delved into this myself, I would have expected the EPP main. So for those who don't know, I think it stands for it was enhanced premier pack. Is that what the EPP stands yeah. for? But basically the main characters that have weapons, lots of them came included in these, um, enhanced premiere enhanced cloud city enhanced java's palace and they come on the front of the box but the box actually damages these cards quite often i've encountered oh well, you saw in the video you saw yeah. the video when i opened the ob1 the actual right. thing that was holding the card up bent the card at the bottom yeah and i've had spots. this happen on a lot of those so beforehand like when i was grading a few of these and if i were to buy or sell them i would have been like oh this should be easy to get like a high grade and like you get right. one with every single one of those boxes but the thing is, it damages them so easily. I've kind of reverted my position a bit to be like, well, maybe, maybe these are actually not so easy to get in good condition. Because, like with Pokemon, I think there was some was, was it burning? I don't remember. Dark darkness ablaze. There was some Charizard that basically came in every set, and there's like sixty thousand of them graded or something crazy from PSA. Oh my just because, right? Because right? everyone could just get one and send them into PSA. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, okay, if people start getting into grading Star Wars, this is going to become kind of like that because you just get one 
with every one of these boxes, but I just don't right. think it's it's going to end up being that scenario. Well, that's actually one of those situations where it's actually better if you had opened that box earlier before it had the opportunity to get damaged, being transported and traded and bent yeah. over time from sitting in that holder, you know, and I'm less inclined to open those kind of boxes now, you know, having seen like the potential damages and marks that come on them. And another, th yeah, sorry. Another quick thing on that too is another thing I've noticed as well is with loose packs, and I think you kind of briefly touched on it, but there's the loose packs and booster boxes. So for something like that, and I don't know, I haven't actually done it and gotten ripped apart like the, the box that includes the sub boxes of enhanced packs, but I might be inclined to go to the, the brick, you know, the original brick that had the 12 enhanced boxes and right. pull from there if I wanted to mint one. And likewise, I've noticed like if I try to buy loose packs sometimes, you don't know where that loose pack has been. Maybe it's gotten knocked around over the years, that sort of thing. So if I were going to buy loose packs, I'd probably buy off of, you know, some of the well-known vendors on eBay, like, you know, Garchow and those guys who, you know, basically rip the box open on their video and then just sell the packs out of it. Uh, Cause then, you know, it's not, yeah, they took care of them. and it's been taken care of. So that just, yeah, I, I think one of the Japanese premier opening, I'm not sure if it's revealed yet or not. I, I have like scheduled openings. Mm -hmm. for a long time out i always want to have content coming out but literally like i think it got like bent or banged around on the side so every single card has this like bend and crease on the side right it's really <laughs> obnoxious <laughs> you know when you're trying to get something of high quality like that um but yeah let's let's dive into like these sets here so we can start from the beginning and try going high level here so like sure. premiere right english so Two player game, essentially, that price hasn't changed really between 30 to, I mean, there's a high end of 70, but really averaging around $45, I'd say. There's, you know, the demand for grading even those promo cards is so small because they're so dang common, even though that was like arguably the first thing that came out. Um, yeah, I, I do agree, like, in terms of, um, I mean, that's the sort of, thing that i think everyone maybe not everyone but probably everyone who's watching this video or, or at least many of them probably remember seeing in target at some point in time or you know your local box store seeing the, the two-player game on the shelf oh, yeah. um uh probably most of us at some point in time have had the white border vader that what is it like is it like you can't play it if there's more than so many unique characters or they just, they just were like yeah versions of the characters that technically existed but weren't really all that special um, but I've seen a few people grade like Run Luke Run and you know some other oddball promos yeah, in there, and, but that's more of like a novelty, right? But like, I think, if I recall, I think someone actually bought that white border two player game Vader for a pretty decent price at some point in time, if I recall from the uh, uh, sales history, like maybe a year or so ago. So I do think you know it, it, it's probably not going to be one of the forerunner cards, but if there are more people getting into it, I can see you know Vader completionists just wanting one you know yeah it's part of their set so in that sense same with I mean, luke and leia right. and, and han and all that stuff so um, in that sense i think due to them being main characters i think that's one of the things that kind of uh appeals to a different sector so to say than than what's probably been dominating the uh um people buying cards over the last couple of decades is you have this kind of different segment of cards that aren't necessarily all that useful for gameplay, although maybe for virtual cards in some instances. But but uh, yeah, it's, it's really interesting, the sorts of trends there. We can go into that later in terms of what I've noticed in sales. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking about, you know, when we're looking at uh, uh, even a card um, of any, any pack, there's like a few mm -hmm. things to consider, right? There's playability. There's like coolness factor. There's rarity. Um, and there was something else I, I was trying to think about, but it was like all these things that kind of formulate to like what what is going to make the card more valuable? Because there's certainly cards that are fairly rare, but like nobody cares about, you know, they're like not <laughs> worth anything. <laughs> or like you said, they're like a card like a, the Vader that like you can't even play really, you know, like it's just not something that anybody's ever going to put in their deck. So it's it's, it's not on the radar. But because it is white border and because they were sealed and probably taken better care of than in the other packs, there's a good chance you can get one at a higher grade. And it's not uncommon to find them. They're fairly plentiful, um, along with the rest of Premier, which we don't have a population report for like 
current premiere boxes, limited mm -hmm. and unlimited, out there. But it's safe to say there's just so many out there. Um, so there is that going for it that even if you don't, you know, pull a Vader right away, there's still a good chance you can get another box, you know, for 200, 300 bucks. Right. Yeah. That's one of those things. I think premiere, I, I started getting back into star Wars collecting around 2019. Gosh, time kind of blends together at this point. But when I was getting back in, I think premiere boxes were somewhere between for premiere limited uh, booster boxes were somewhere between, I think a hundred or 200 bucks a box. And then it, jumped to like around 200 ish and then it kind of had a few jumps to around 400 ish. And I think that's about where it is right now today. Uh, it doesn't really, hasn't really gone up in price as much. Cause I think, as you said, there's just a lot of them out there. Cause yeah, when the card game was coming out in the mid nineties, I think a lot of uh, hobbyists and the like, you know, even at that time, star Wars was a well-known collectible. So they probably stuffed a bunch of them in their coffers somewhere and like, Oh, this will be worth a fortune someday. And then, well, of course that, didn't really happen when Decipher lost their license, and who knows? But if they, they definitely just... printed more of these premieres than literally anything else. Like they must have uh, learned, like, oh, we've learned, we've printed too much of this. I'm not sure. Dial it back a little bit. I'm not sure. Yeah, because they have the stat on their website that people have linked to that says they basically printed enough that there's roughly around a hundred thousand of each R1. So then you can do the math. It's kind of hard because they have both the. Uh, booster boxes and then the the starter decks so i'm not sure how it breaks down oh, right, right, how right, much right. of each was printed but basically it would be enough that allows for a hundred thousand r1 so if there were is an original population of a hundred thousand you know black border darth vader's originally uh probably a lot of those have gotten played or lost over the years so who knows how many are still floating around today but that gives us yeah i mean even even enhanced premiere you know that was used to sell more but those were unlimited right so mm -hmm. those packs are unlimited and the, um, what am I thinking of? So there was two player enhanced, which was unlimited, the limited, and then the starter decks, but the starter deck boxes go for roughly the same too. I mean, there's a lot of cards in them, but just less rares. Yeah. Starter decks will roughly have, well, it should be exactly it should be two thirds. Yeah. Two thirds, the amount of rares as a, a booster box, which would have 36. So if you're only interested in the price of the rares, it'd be like two thirds of the price. Although te technically with the uh, starter decks, you get more of the other cards. I think it's total like what, 60 times 12, so 720 cards versus, um, sorry, 15 times 36, uh, quick mental math. What's that? 520 uh, ish. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Not right. Yeah. Eight times six fire. Yeah. Something. <laughs> well, I just think about, you know, some people are like, oh, this is the first set, this is the earliest one, but there are literally, like, you can buy 50 booster packs, you know, for four bucks, and there's never-ending supply of them, you know, for, so from, like, a speculation standpoint, it's like, nah, I guess if you're looking for the right cards to grade... <sighs> Then that's I, that kind of works. If you're looking for those rare ones, it doesn't matter if you open a lot because they're not worth much. Premier's in an interesting right place because, um, I, as far as if you want to speculate on something, because I do think, like you said, it, there's are fair points against it that there's just a lot of it out there. But I'd say on the flip side, though, it's kind of like Pokemon Base Set Unlimited. Like there might be a lot of it out there, but it's also the original, and there's always something about the original set that just like that's the first place people are going to go, especially because it has like most of the main characters from a new hope. So I think it may never be like the most valuable box, even though, you know, maybe it's one of the most iconic uh, because of that. But I do think that there will be, you know, a decent amount of demand over certain other set boxes, just because of those two factors of being the first and having, you know, a whole bunch of the main characters of interest. It could, it could be one of those things where like, it's plentiful until it's not. And then when mm -hmm. people realize it's not, that's when it like really. Oh, shows up. yeah. It's the going point to of be where, rough. where people realize like, Oh, I actually can't buy this on any third party websites, stores. Like nobody <laughs> has it anymore. And maybe that's because of people like me cracking open stuff <laughs> or because they get damaged through storms or, you know, it's, it's really hard to get a sense of like a census of how many sealed boxes there are. I'm not talking about like boosters. Those would be really hard to track, but actual boxes you know it's safe to say there's well over a hundred you know of each oh yeah for sure I've heard, I've heard stories that you know of people back in the 90s that like bought a pallet of it essentially and just 
put it in their warehouse. I don't know, like, yeah, how many that's of those are crazy. still there, but I've heard stories of that. And the pallet, you know, is like what, like 100 plus boxes essentially. Oh, yeah, I don't know how many lot. exactly, but like, but the also thing with Premiere though is if people start shredding them, like, you have to shred a decent amount of boxes to get enough of the cards if you want like a high grading one. Like, I think JP Peltier of the Star Wars CCG grading group on Facebook mentioned like when he was looking for a vader to grade he basically had to rip open i think like almost 30 booster boxes to find one that he was adequately uh you know that's a lot of boxes and yeah frankly <laughs> if you've seen my pain in opening up premiere <laughs> packs which everybody has because everybody has comments on it and you were talking about open premieres like a slap in the face yeah like, there are i counted earlier there's 50 r1s and there's 46 r2s so you have twice the chance of getting an R2, right? Because they're twice mm -hmm. as common. So just to get a Vader out of the like 300 and with 327 cards in Premiere, like total cards, right? So of the rares you're going to get, the likeliness of you getting a Vader, what is like one in almost 150 or something? Like Crunch the numbers. Yeah, I think it roughly works out one to in one in every four or five boxes. Yeah, it's, it's not it's easy. Yeah, it's not... It's not <laughs> common at all. And then on top of that, you have, you know, like you said, the other issues. But I remember somebody saying, like, there's like a million Vaders that were printed or something. I, I don't know if that's combined. It's not a million. It's 100,000. Yeah, 100,000. 100, I, I corrected Matt on that one because, yeah, he says. Oh, OK, OK. But okay. it's 100,000. Like a million. That seems like too no, many. There's 100,000. That was how many originally printed. So, you know, with like play and, you know, just flooding or whatever happening over. The oh, years, no like, doubt majority of them are either lost or damaged or played with you know yeah. and remember i think i saw a video of igar chow or something right he posted like 60 of them but like none of them are in mint condition they're all played and damaged which is fine you know like if you're cool to have them in a binder there's nothing wrong with that but yeah does he still have that legendary auction up on ebay he used to have one with like 54 black faders and 54 yeah uh, i was like white just Vaders. show off stuff. yeah <laughs> it's always like, fun seeing that i love it He's like, oh, uh, I felt like having nine of everything. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so there's always somebody like that, right? Like out there that's hoarding it. But so okay, so we've gone through, you know, two player limited, unlimited, enhanced mm -hmm. Japanese variant of that. We can't go through here without touching on that. There haven't been as many sales of those. I'm looking mm -hmm. at the prices here. So uh starter deck box. 1787 in 2021 april of the, earlier this year 1999 that that's about right i would i would say you know two grand another one sold for two thousand fifty dollars in 2021 um i definitely wouldn't pay more more than that uh based on the odds like we were talking about to get the rares that you really want in those japanese things and you've seen my luck it's terrible <laughs> but but um you know even if i keep even if i bought that entire box like there's a good chance i'm gonna get flooded with you know more r2s that are nowhere near that value like it, as soon as you crack up that open you know maybe now i only have 200 dollars worth maybe 300 dollars worth of cards you know there's a chance i could get a vader or a, you know a leia or c3po and if i got one of those but then the rest were like r2s or something there's no way i'm going to recoup that value because nobody wants these common and uncommon japanese because it's already niche you know and I, I have tons of them i'm trying to find ways of getting them out into the ether <laughs> uh, because i can't play with them right i don't speak japanese like i just wanted a set of them but i wanted the hunt of doing that um and then the, the on top of that the ones that the people that have already cracked open these these decks take the mains and they grade them or they keep them for themselves. So like as a completionist, you know, it's, it's harder and harder to get, you know, those final pieces of the puzzle because anybody who would have had a few kept the good ones and got rid of the, the stuff they didn't really care about. Right. So like, there's a chance I could pull it, but every time I'm opening up one of these rando boosters, I'm also thinking to myself, well, did somebody crack open a box, get some good stuff and then say, you know what, I got a few boosters left over. Let me just sell them because there's a good chance they're not going to be anything good, you know, like there's that too, you know? So like part of me is like, am I just going to have to cough up more boxes, you know, to try and complete the set? Um, I, I think that price is okay. I mean, if I had it, I think 1800, 2000 is about right. I definitely wouldn't pay more than that, especially given like a starter deck box. Like I'm not going to personally pay over $140 for, 
a single starter deck box. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've bought them for like, you know, anywhere from 80 to 115 over time and Japanese card value, like sealed, unsealed technically has gone down over the last few months. I've been able to acquire more harder to get rares and I've seen more stuff sit longer on eBay because again, there's only so many people looking for these cards and you know, it's like, what is this really worth to me? Even if they are more rare, if there's not enough people looking for them, who cares? You know, like it doesn't matter. It, it is interesting. Yeah. With Japanese, right. Cause it is technically, as you said, rarer than the English variant. Uh, I think one or a couple of things that might work against it um, are that, uh, you know, Star Wars is a fundamentally uh, American IP as a compared to, say, like Pokemon, which was, you know, Japanese in origin. So mm -hmm. here, Japanese is more of a variant of, of kind of the base, if you will, which is the English card game. Whereas in Pokemon, you know, Japanese is more the original, although maybe the English card game is more... Uh, uh, you know, taken off, at least in the U.S., of course, as being a collectible. So you kind of have that, you know, and people who were collecting Star Wars in the 90s, the card games, you know, they were collecting the English variants. So it's like mm -hmm. to kind of have more people interested in the Japanese is probably not the first place they would go. Like they would probably go back to like the English, probably like the sets in the 90s, like premiere be like, yeah, that's what I used to collect back when I was collecting Star Wars CCG or like those are the movies. And then once they're in that, maybe they'll move to the Japanese niche just because it's kind of rarer. I mean, that's kind of the, if you want to think about it in terms of just speculation, like that's the thing that has going for it is it's rarer. I just don't, uh, I, I think it's one of those things where it's kind of like a, Maybe not status, but I mean, it's like Japanese Darth Vader has kind of this cult status as like, oh, this is one of like. The well, it's clearly hard to come across. It's clearly yeah, hard it's not... to come across. <laughs> right. And especially like if you get one in really good shape, I mean, right. that is definitely a prized, you know, collectible to have for sure. Right. But I think when you're coming across, you know, premier English, when rolling out in an American market for people first time getting into the game, there's a nostalgia, there's emotion to that, there's energy excitement you can play with it look at it trade it with your friends but you're not going to have that with the japanese side because nobody was like oh my god i got japanese premiere as my first set and like this is what i played with and i learned japanese this way like nobody has that story ever you know so it's more of like you said like a niche like either show off item for when you've completed your english master set which i have done and i have multiple sets like many of other collectors so i'm thinking like of the people that have a complete premiere japanese set i'm there's got to be less than 20 people maybe that have that, you know, because they even they maybe they just cared enough to have it. Um, and of those people, some of them have two sets um, or plenty of extras or plethora around. And then the rest of the environment is either like, well, that's too hard to complete. So I'm not going to start, um, <laughs> you know, or I just don't care, you know, to do that. Like I wanted an English set. Japanese has no meaning for me. And, and frankly, I was one of those people for a long time. Like I, it was just like Japanese. I'm like, hmm, whatever. I think in 2017, I bought a Japanese A New Hope complete set because it was available and it was like 300 bucks. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll just get it. Cause like I wouldn't collect it, but it's a full set. I don't have to hunt for it. Like I just have it. And then I literally just sat in a box for a few years and like, I don't know what that's worth now, but clearly more than $300. Uh, the Hoth set was like 450, 500. I just barely missed bidding on that. Uh, I was kind of sad about that because I realized, oh, wait a second, this doesn't pop up very often. Like, it was clear, like, this is quite rare, but, like, nobody was really, like, quite on to it. Then. Yeah. Um, and it, with Premiere, I just, I don't know, it was never on my radar. I don't think it's on many other people's radar. There are just, a few people collecting it now, though. Like, I think I mentioned um, when we were talking with Matt, but, like, for example, like, I collected Japanese Pokemon cards, right? Mm -hmm. um, I actually put a decent amount of money into star Wars cards and collecting various, you know, things for grading for personal collections for whatever. And actually as far as heritage goes, I'm technically somewhat Japanese, although who knows how much, but, <laughs> okay. but, but, you, but, but just, I just bring that up because I actually don't really collect the Japanese star Wars cards. Like it just doesn't do much for me. So like if I'm not really that much into it, cause and then I just think like how many people really out there are and clearly there are some people out there, but that just gives me a little bit of pause in terms of like, 
trying to figure out who would be a target, like who's going to really get into this. I can kind of tell you the target market because, you know, somebody myself, like I, I will look at a collecting challenge and say, you know, from a level of possibility to complete on a scale of one to 10, like, where does this stand? You know, like this yeah. is definitely not easy. This is definitely not something a lot of people are going for. It's somewhat rare, but it is possible. I recognize there's enough existing unopened product and between the stores and eBay stuff does pop up here from time to time, which means in my mind, this could take me a year or two to complete possibly maybe three, if I'm missing like a few key cards, but that's okay because they'll eventually surface, you know, like those last missing cards. Whereas I see something like Hoth Japanese, like, there's a good chance like the cards I'd be looking for just aren't available. Mm -hmm. Like nobody has them. And like, there's, uh, there's definitely completed sets out there. There's people that are really close to completing a Hoth Japanese set and same with premier, but Hoth more so that it would make more sense for the hobby at large to have the people that are missing five cards, six cards to get those last cards, complete those sets. And then when they're ready to part ways with it, if somebody really wanted a completed set, they could get it from somebody who did it, as opposed to having a few people with a bunch of partials floating around, you know, and it's kind of this big puzzle matching game in my mind. So like Hoth, no. Premiere, yes, I could see happening. I would yeah. much rather just if if I really cared enough to get it, right? And and part of me is like, well, some of these Hoth cards are just cool in general, but why would I really want this? You know, like do I want it because it has nostalgic value? Do I want it because it's rare? Do I want it because the card itself looks specifically really cool and I need to have it on my shelf or like for bragging rights? Or am I just doing it because other people are doing it, in which case maybe I really shouldn't be doing it. Well, you brought up some good points. And I think for myself, right, like some people are extreme completionists, so they really just need to have it all. And I guess if you're that sort of person, like, <laughs> You really do have to have that two thousand dollar R one, you know, interrupt Hoth Dark Side Rare mm -hmm. card. Meteor impact. Um, <laughs> yeah, meteor impact. Um, but like for myself, I'm not really that much of a completionist. Like if I buy a set, like if I were to buy a set, I'd probably be buying it to try to find some of the uh nicer cards to for grading or just add to my collection. Like that's one of those things it's like I can't have too many like, you know, mint Darth Vader English Premier cards. So like for me. If I were to see that two thousand dollar, you know, Hoth Japanese rare, like in my mind or my heart of hearts, I'd be like, well, if I'm gonna drop like two thousand dollars on this, why don't I just buy like, you know, I don't know, a whole bunch of like English Darth Vader? It's in really great condition. Yeah, you know, like a Japanese yeah. Darth Vader in great condition, or a couple of them. Like, I just would have a very hard time doing that. Um, so perhaps I'm not the 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 person who would be doing that but there is, certainly are people doing it and then you can see that on eBay. <laughs> i get it but yeah the higher you go with that amount the more you start asking yourself like what else could this money do mm -hmm. and like you know does this bring me enough joy to say this one card is going to bring me more joy than the potential of buying like boxes of cards for something else that i could mm -hmm. rip open or do something with um okay so let's let's move on from premiere we're done with that let's go on to like a new hope here so limited unlimited prices have ranged here from as 2020 like in the 175 range they've crept up 300 400 even as much as you know over over well that's japanese but 700 dollars for an english and new hope was a high there was 650 a lot floating around the 450 500 range for a new hope so you know why this box is jumping up here right this is another box with rare ones rare twos uncommons ones uncommon twos common one common twos it's not a big set it's like almost half the size right maybe mm -hmm. a little less than half the size or it's about half the size um you get your key main characters like chewbacca and r2 are r2s right you have brainiac and conquest and red five are r ones you know maybe more sought after and like you said, maybe it's less of a slap in the face like than from Premiere. Um, but w this box has been creeping up. You know, a New Hope set complete is, you know, 150 bucks maybe, give or take, like for both Revised and Black Border. Maybe they're close, you know, but that's a big that's a big jump, right? I mean, 
considering you can get these rares as singles for like a few bucks on eBay. What what's what's driving that up? And like, is this just speculation of the box? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to. <laughs> what's that? I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. Like for myself, I guess there's a a couple of stories baked in here. Actually, when I was a kid, I think I might have told you uh, before we got on here on the call, but. Uh, I actually really liked opening a new hope packs. Cause as you mentioned, yeah, it doesn't feel like you're getting slapped in the face. You can pull main characters fairly often. I feel like even the non-main character pulls are cool. ships, good. Yeah. Cool ships apart from maybe like magnetic suction tube. You don't want to get that one. Uh, <laughs> that's of course what I pull when I open it. <laughs> that's not what you want to pull. So don't do that. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, and then I think the other thing that works against the new hope boxes is as a set, it doesn't really have an identity. I think just, about every other set actually or box and store ccg has an identity of some kind but a new hope just feels like the cards that for whatever reason they just didn't put into premiere and they're like well, yeah. what do we do with these we'll just make the this premier other box. expansion like yeah, yeah. build on a premiere because those cards sync like playing wise they sync with each other like, yeah seamlessly um so yeah you're right it definitely is and it almost makes you think well why wasn't premiere itself split up even more like maybe a a, a death star one box and maybe like a an early Tatooine box or Moss mm. Eisley box or something would have made more sense because then you have like aliens and stormtroopers and Obi Wan's and stuff on the surface, and then you get your Death Star Imperial stuff and ships for maybe that. You know that would have made more sense maybe to split it up, but it's neither here nor there. But I, again, like with the box, because I was asking somebody else about this, I'm like, what what's the best cards to pull out of it? And they're like, oh, Red Five, you know. But like you can go, you can get a Red Five, you know, on eBay. <laughs> 10 bucks, maybe less, you know, um, Chewbacca is plentiful available. I mean, people have graded those, but even if you, even if you pulled those and graded them, like, I don't think you'd still get to $500. <laughs> like, no, maybe. you wouldn't. And I mean, some of like, is it Rudy from alpha investments? I imagine a decent amount of the people watching this video would know who that is, but he's basically a guy that, you know, puts some money into magic cards and there's a whole bunch of business i've on heard that. of him yeah I've right but yeah. but he's made a note that i think over time like when you when you, when a booster box first comes out the expected value is pretty close to the cost of the booster box itself in terms of like the cards you'd expect to get in terms of if you were to sell them be pretty close to the price of the box but over time as a booster box gets older and older the split between the price of the box and then the expected value of the contents tends to diverge and uh, mm. it just gets larger and larger over time because it gets older. They're just rarer, like more people have opened them and... yeah, more people have opened them. So you're paying a lot then uh, for so-called the experience of opening, you know, a really old box. Um, now at times, you know, the, um, the, the, uh, expected value could probably still invert at times especially in markets that are not uh completely rational like this one here there's not that many people in it so you can imagine at times there will be times where you could open a box of a new hope and probably come out on top uh you know with the right fluctuations and either you know graded card prices or raw card prices or sealed it may come out that you could actually crack a box of a new hope and come out on top if you hit let's say you know a couple psa 10 chewies a couple psa 10 r2s which is completely possible in a box yeah. uh so but but i think in the long run though you would still if the you know theory holds out just come out on top if you did not crack the box although maybe you could crack the box and move the money around and then buy another box and then hold that like you might be able to make stuff like that happen but just in general if you weren't going to touch anything you're still probably better keeping it sealed uh, I know what you're saying because I remember there was a I think even Alpha Investments had a video where they purchased a hundred thousand dollar Alpha booster box mm -hmm. on Heritage. They opened it up, they pulled Black Lotus and you know some other um, key rares. You know, well centered too, which is mm -hmm. rare for an open you know booster or cards at that time. But their expected return on value is probably you know sixty seventy thousand. So like mm -hmm. they didn't. They're not going to reach even with all some of these great cards they pulled. They're still not going to reach the value that they paid for on that box. You know, I just find that interesting because I don't know. A, a, but even like a a booster pack right now for a New Hope is twenty bucks on eBay. Like mm -hmm. If you want to buy one, it's twenty bucks. Um, you know, like, and I, I'm still wrapping my head around that. Like, 
magnet suction tube or conquest or chewy or brainiac i still like i feel like that's high you know like as a somebody who wants to get that experience to open the pack on channel or something i'm like i want to but like this just seems crazy like i'm never gonna get the return value for this it's just gonna become like junk but i don't know i mean maybe maybe it is about specking on it holding on to it maybe just because it's less abundant than premiere i you know I'm not really sure. Yeah, that's the one set that's a little bit of a mystery to me because, I mean, I did like opening it as a kid, but as far as the contents, I guess it might have the same thing going for it that Tatooine has going for it and that when you get a box, you probably get a large amount of main characters with it. So if that's kind of your what you're going for, if you're like, I want a lot of main characters for what I'm buying, mm -hmm. if yeah, that's what your like philosophy is, A New Hope might actually be a pretty good well, set. Tatooine is a small set. Tatooine is yeah. one of the smallest sets, if not the smallest one. So, yeah. yeah, like they're small boxes, but there's only like 90 cards in the set or mm -hmm. something. Like, there's yeah, there's there. actually, I think there is actually 90 cards in the set, which is, you know, completely bonkers when it has 30 packs in the in the right. box it, it, with like 30 packs. rares. I mean, if A New Hope has like 160 or something, I don't remember the exact mm -hmm. number, but um, it's definitely a fraction of Premier and Tatooine right. is small. But I like Tatooine because relatively cheaper you know it's easier to buy the booster packs for that and like you said better chance of pulls um mm -hmm. i know we're, we're jumping way ahead but um, <laughs> i got my tatooine box a few years ago for 90 bucks because i think it had like you know a corner ding. tatooine was like 90 bucks i guess we should shelve this for a little bit later but it was 90 bucks as recently as i think like 2019 or something like i was yeah, buying them I, for I, around that much yeah, I, I remember being like, eh, it was like 110 bucks. 100 it was mm -hmm. like, maybe that's a lot. I don't know. But like, I didn't have it. So I was like, I'm happy to get it. And yeah. I think my special edition boxes too was also mm -hmm. much cheaper. Um, but let's finish this A New Hope thing. So A New right. Hope, the last revised and unlimited, it looks like there's less revised sales in general, but they also kind of cap here around similar amount. Yeah, to, as best I know, they've been selling for a pretty close amount to the uh, to the uh, limited. Um, it's got thirty packs instead of thirty six, and then it got rid of a lot of the bolt cards because they're nine card packs. Um, probably technically rarer, but Star Wars, you know, as well as most card games, has the stigma about white border cards. So even though they're technically rarer, probably people are a little off put by that. Yeah, I mean, war for the people that think a master set is just if I get black border of everything that is, you know, white border mm -hmm. is just extra. Um, they definitely would have. I would imagine there's a less supply of revised. Same with Dagobah, a less supply of revised. And people say, oh, the value's more, or whatever. But the sales of boxes don't reflect that, and the value of a completed set is similar, you know, um, to them. So. You know, specking on white border boxes, like, I don't know. Maybe long term. I, I think short term, again, it has that stigma working against it. But if there are enough, uh, let's say, enough volume to make it more of a rational uh, market where people kind of understand what's out there, I do think that the revised might have an uptick just because, you know, there it is probably much more uh, uh, scarce, especially like like you mentioned, people trying to complete whiteboard egg if I heard lots of horror stories <laughs> as far as the english sets go it's one of the ones that's more difficult um yeah i think i bought um i was trying to complete mine and i was maybe like two-thirds done and then somebody was selling like a 95 percent complete white border dagobah set at the time for i don't know 75 bucks or something i picked that mm -hmm. up and finished finished it with singles and called it a day and sold the rest off but yeah i mean people say it's more but i'm like is it more like because if the demand isn't really there you can't ask 500 dollars for a complete set of white border mm -hmm. dagobah most people are like meh you know <laughs> it's like right okay they're not gonna play with it you know i don't know I, I i don't mind the look of them though i think from a grading standpoint like i would actually rather have a white border executor or son of skywalker or yoda i think that's just kind of kind of funky you know like mm -hmm. you'd expect the black border but to have the white border ones for the hoth it looks really nice the white border hoth it looks that's true it's that's like true. great fits with the Those theme two look good the finishing up a new hope the japanese we really only have on here there's only like one sale i can tell you i got three boxes of a japanese a new hope for like 150 bucks 
so they were like 50 bucks a pop and that was like five years ago four years ago no I, uh, yeah like four years ago i traded mine i didn't sell mine i traded one for a reflections one box and i traded another one for a bunch of premier japanese and some other rares i was missing so we don't really know the value of it we see it listed for 1200 we see one sale here for 750 from what i understand uh oh no there's one for 600 last year but um, from what I understand, people are like, oh, it's abundant. It's everywhere. I mm -hmm. got like three boxes myself, but we don't see many sales of it. And there's not many people in the market buying yeah. it. So it's very murky in terms of really how much is out there because either somebody, like you said, is sitting on a pallet of them, or there's maybe not as many as we thought there were because there was an abundance. And maybe those who had them just got rid of them, destroyed them, lost them. Maybe they're not as, as common as we like to believe they are. Um, there's just not as big of a market like looking for a New Hope Japanese cards, boosters, and boxes because you can get a booster for thirty-two bucks on eBay right now, um, At one which point... is not bad if you think <laughs> about it. Compared to the English one, is twenty bucks. It's like right. At that's one pretty point... cheap. At one point in time, I believe there were an abundant amount of them. A few years ago, I remember. I think I was talking with Scott at Category One Games. And he mentioned that there was, for whatever reason, I don't recall the specific circumstances of it. Maybe it was like Ollie's or something, but someone had like basically a warehouse of them, a whole bunch. I think a lot of them may have gone to Wild Thing Games. I'm not sure, but basically there, there was a certain amount at one point in time in the not too distant past. Of course, things changed since then. Who knows? Maybe they they did sell quite a few of them, if I recall. Um, so there were a few right. out there. So that's why probably of the Japanese sets, like you have, Premier, A New Hope, and then uh, Hoth. I think A New Hope is probably by far, at the moment, the easiest one to acquire. Um, that could be why. I think if I recall, Wild Thing Games might have one up for sale for like 1100 on eBay, but I don't know if that's still the case. But yeah, I mean, I th I think even that price is pretty high. I think that's yeah. just wishful thinking. Well, I mean, you can list something for whatever you want on eBay. As I'm well aware, I have... Uh, some interestingly <laughs> high high price things at times but uh yeah i think yeah i mean i think you know six hundred dollars not uncalled for um if, if i had to say it'd probably be like six out. to eight hundred bucks i don't know if i had to guess a yeah price for it right would, now. at least for me personally i can't speak for everybody but given that i don't fully have a grasp of the census or, or you know amount yeah. that's out there it's really tough to gauge that product um, mm -hmm. But you just don't really hear many people talking about it. So, um, okay. So, moving into Dagobah, you're skipping um, Hoth. Why are you doing that? Oh, sorry, sorry, Hoth. Let's let's talk about Hoth. Um, you're so right. So Hoth also has rare ones, rare twos, mm -hmm. uncommon ones, uncommon twos, common ones, common twos. It's a relatively smaller set as well, right? Like 160 something cards, I think, mm -hmm. in there. Um, you got some pretty cool cards in there, though. Uh, very desirable looking cards and for those who like to play out you know the battle of hoth which of course is one of the most badass things ever um that has that going for it right and the packs the boosters themselves are you know actively listed for like about 24 25 bucks All right. a booster with boxes going anywhere from you know 400 500 uh really like even close to 600 in some more recent sales which sounds about right i think mm -hmm. i wouldn't have any problem paying 500 dollars for mine I, I may have picked up a, my boxes like long ago for like 300 or something but i was happy to pay them at the time because i just thought it was cool um and i also didn't know how rare it was when i got it um i was worried they were running out uh, you know, you, you just had this sense like I can't find it online. I don't see it available, and there come Hot these box. pockets in time, you know, through eBay where like you don't see something available, and suddenly you're, like it pops up, and you're like, "Holy crap!" Like I need to get this because like I don't know if I'm gonna see it again, you know. And then we, I worried about that about Reflections three, five years ago, you know. Mm -hmm. and, like, uh, well, we can dive into that later, but Hoth is cool. Two player game is. Even in the English version, it doesn't look like there's many sales, but that holds up better than the Premiere. Mm -hmm. It's um, a little bit more, yeah, compared to you. It's a little bit of a premium over the Premiere, probably because it's also more interesting, if I recall, with the cards you get in them. You get some cool snow speeders and walkers and things like that. Yeah, and from what I understand, there's only one Leia in the two-player Hoth 
as opposed to like mm-hmm. multiple Chewies and other stuff, mm-hmm. and Veers, um, Blizzard Walkers, right? Lone Rogues, all that stuff. There's multiple, but I think Leia, I think there's only one because that's what kept the Japanese two player game. It says it's like around 375. That sounds about right. I think I bought mine for 350. And as far not, as not long like, ago, as far as Hoth goes, if I recall, and again, I might be kind of biased because that's when I started collecting as after Hoth came out. But if I kind of recall, I think that was the heyday of what many of the players from those days considered to be the, the playability of the game. A lot of people loved playing the Hoth set. So I think mm-hmm. that may have contributed to a lot of Hoth boxes being open because say compared to, I think a new hope and premiere, it does seem like there's many fewer Hoth boxes that come up for sale. And I think that may have played into it that it was just had a lot of cards. People really wanted to play the game with like a lot of walkers, snow speeders, things like that. Yeah. The, you know reenact the cool cars off. yeah they really are cool droids cool aliens just like cool stuff like the wampa you know um the trenches and stuff like it's just cool mm-hmm. uh even the pilots in there like i don't know like even the um you know revised or or, or not revised the the value of of these boxes is still very desirable you know part of me wants to get more boxes of them just to have and maybe potentially open later or just to keep just because they're cool. But I haven't quite pulled the trigger on that because I'm like, eh. <laughs> the eBay listings are all like 600, 700, 800 bucks. I'm like, that's for higher a than box? anything. In- yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I don't think they're going to sell for that much, but that's what people are listing them for. Yeah, you can list it wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, you can list it for whatever you want. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the there was a time where I thought there wasn't that many. I'm I'm pretty sure from like a population standpoint, there's less out there. I'm not saying there isn't somebody who has a bunch of them mm-hmm. and there's certainly plenty of Hoth open products. So for somebody to complete a set, that's especially an English set, like that's not a problem. There's definitely people with hordes of Hoth cards who just love them. Um, yeah, but- I, I do think that's something. And again, maybe I'm less of a player, although I hear the bots are back in GIMP. I always get nervous. Like people will talk about playing on GIMP and I'm, I'm not nearly good enough. That For those who don't know, that's the online Star Wars CCG uh, playing, uh, uh, I guess you call it an app. It's a website, but you know, you can play the game online and, you know, people will play it. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of, Raw cards, and raw means, you know, outgraded cards, especially if these early sets out there. And I think sometimes players will get a bit touchy that there aren't too many cards. But with these early sets we're discussing, I think there's quite a few of them out there. And I'd be very surprised if we run out of, like, cheat played, I don't know, like, whatever your rare choices in these sets. I just wanted to bring that up. I don't know, it just came up in my head for whatever reason. So. Yeah, and I think, you know, if you want to complete a set with this, um, under 200 bucks, you can easily complete the Hoth sets. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's plenty available in repacks. I've definitely seen plenty of Hoth cards appear in different reflection packs too, which means mm-hmm. that they printed more than they were able to sell, right? So anything that ends up in there, I mean, everyone's used to seeing Jabba's Palace and Cloud City and those reflections packs because they just had so many. Well, they packed them full um, of those. Yeah. Yeah, they packed them full of those. But Unlimited premiere. <laughs> there's still a few Hoth cards in there, not as many. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I think Hoth will just, I think that'll continue to stand the test of time. I feel good about spec, specking on the boxes with those, mm-hmm. especially if people keep on opening them, although I'm not sure if they are opening them. I think there's maybe a few for maybe who will be interested in grading it's, stuff, but hard at to the gauge. Moment, I think at the moment it's difficult because a lot of the cards in Hoth are probably, I mean, they might appeal to very hardcore Star Wars fans because, you know, your average. A uh, person who kind of likes Star Wars probably isn't going to know what like Blizzard one is, or uh, you know, like is it Tyrant? Is that the one that's in there? Um, some of the names of the Star Destroyers, like they might think they're cool, but it's not one of the first things they'd be interested in. Like the card they'd probably be interested in is Commander Luke Skywalker, uh, but that's like one card. Maybe General Veers. Um, yeah, there's like Admiral that. Ozzel. Let's see, Ozzel, Wampa. Wampa, Wampa, things like that. So I mean, there are cards. It's just Stalker and Tyrant and Rogue yeah. One, Rogue Two, Rogue Three. It's not like there aren't cards. They're just kind of a little bit more nuanced compared to some of the other sets. So in that sense, it would be difficult for me to justify ripping open a box of Hoth being like, well, what am I really hoping to get out of this? Well, maybe I hope for really meant like Commander Luke Skywalker. But beyond that, like there's a lot of things that, you know, people probably like. It's just 
I don't think at the moment there's enough people in the game to, um, you know, make it work at the moment. But that's not to say the future wouldn't be that way. I can certainly see the appeal of this set. Like there are, as we said, a lot of very cool cards in there. So hypothetically, if you buy a box now for $500, you hold on to it for a while. You speculate mm -hmm. that something like a Commander Luke Skywalker or maybe General Veers or whatever, some of the other high rares, you know, increase in value. Theoretically, with those graded, you know, if you did pull them out of box down the road, you could recoup, you know, that money or, or technically go higher if... Mm -hmm you know, the value of those individual cards go higher. Or maybe if for some reason it's really hard to get a high graded, you know, Hoth rare of some variety or something. Yeah. It's, I hard, think... it's hard to tell until we get some more of the population of these cards in. I think it depends. Yeah. On that kind of like you're referring to like people kind of taking that step beyond just collecting like the main main characters and trying to get some of the more interesting, like not super main characters, but still very interesting cards. Like maybe that next in terms of tier of interest in Star Wars CCG, the next level of collectability of getting all those other interesting uh, cards that are not just like Luke and Darth Vader and those sorts of things, because Hoth certainly has a lot of those. And I think, you know, you could certainly make it work. Yeah, so it's something to keep keep an eye on for sure. Uh, it's definitely some. It's definitely one of those boxes that I'd be happy to have more than one of. Right. Um, even though I don't have more than one right now. <laughs> I have a revised, yeah. I have a limited, I have a two-player box, but uh, I don't have a Hoth Japanese one. Um, we'd be hard-pressed not to touch on that, although I don't have much to say about it. Uh, there is one registered sale here of a Japanese Hoth box at 9200 I have heard rumors that they have sold or transferred for $6,500, $7,000, those boxes are definitely hard to come across. Even if you know people in Japan, they recognize that as rare. Um, we must be coming towards the end of the whole printing Japanese card era, as opposed to Premiere, where they made more Japanese cards of those. Hoth, definitely, it was dialed back. Mm -hmm. um, for those who are collecting it, you know, power to you. I hope you get to finish it. You might have the opportunity when I crack open... 14 Hoth Japanese packs. I, I don't know if I'll open all of them. I'm, I'm, I mean, we might. Knowing my luck, it might all be, you know, magnetic suction tube seeker style, <laughs> sand crawler level of cards, which would be a mess. Don't dig on sand crawlers. I think people love them. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't cheap to acquire those. So I'm hoping we get something no. decent out of it. The interesting thing is some of the cards, like, from my perspective, right? If even if they're uncommon out of like a Hoth Japanese or um, Rebel or Imperial, it wouldn't matter. Like if I just thought it was cool, like I might just consider grading a few of those just to have for a PC. Um, you know, if I thought it was just like this is a card you don't see all the time. This is kind of neat. You know, like even if I don't feel like I'm going to be able to finish the set, like we mentioned before, like. Maybe it's just cool to have in a different variant, you know? <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I specking on those, if you find one of those boxes, I think the last census somebody took was that there's about 12 boxes floating around. I don't know about boosters. I think a multiple people probably have a few in their collection, but they're definitely not common at all. They're definitely very rare. Right. I think um, so the, the, Andy... the value is... Yeah, Andy Talaga, you know, he's pretty up on that. I think he spent a good amount of time in Japan and he's familiar with kind of the hobby shops over there. And, uh, you know, Japan doesn't really have a lot of uh, space near the cities and people don't really keep stuff like that around. And he said, like, he doesn't know anywhere over there that would, you know, have it. There's probably not many places that have them lying around. So that figure of like a dozen of them may not be too far off from the from the, the accurate truth there. Um I do think there's been a few that have sold for a little bit under that, but it's one of those things where it's like, there's a few people who want it uh, probably willing to pay a decent amount, but, uh, but they yeah. wouldn't even know where to start to find it. Yeah, yeah. Literally the boxes are like located all over the world. Like they could be in Europe. They might not even be in Japan. You know? Of the like ones. Europe, yeah. I guess it's a matter of uh, what's the word we were using diamond hands. Is that the word people were using the last bits? Like you probably know a few of the people who have them right now, but in terms of you don't want to go to one of those people. Yeah. You're kind of, you're kind of at a loss as far as the, the people who aren't already in the Star Wars CCG community who you try to get a hot box from. There's just not, not an easy way. 
my final thought on like the Japanese collector thing is like I personally don't know anybody in Japan who's actively collecting Star Wars CCG Japanese cards. I'm not saying they don't exist. Mm -hmm. I just it's not somebody you come across like in the group or something. And maybe they don't. Maybe they're not part of the Star Wars. Maybe there's a Star Wars CCG Japan that like mm -hmm. nobody's seen before. You know, maybe there's some underground club. I do know that Star Wars as an IP, like you were talking about before. It does have a following in Japan, but it's definitely not, you know, near the same degree, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as the U.S. And there's such a big following with just like anime and uh, so many other th IPs that even Americans like have never heard of that are really big over there. I mean, obviously Pokemon, we all know Yu-Gi-Oh, um, and but the anima culture and like some of the things that are exciting over there, we don't even know, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, just Star Wars is just not nearly as big of a deal yeah things are a little different over there like you know in the u.s pokemon in terms of the collecting card hobbies as far as a collectible was probably the one that was the biggest in the late 90s and early 2000s but actually even though pokemon's japanese it was probably actually Yu-Gi-Oh that was a bigger uh card collectible over there at the times that they were both over there uh, and of course, probably compared to that, you know, Star Wars isn't really, I don't think it was really that sort of a thing over there. Um, and then the the, the Japanese uh, uh, people who are collecting Star Wars CCG, I mean, the players, they, I think a lot of them moved to the English cards just because for various reasons, I forget they said like the Japanese ones had like, weren't as clear or something on the rules, yeah. but, but uh, yeah, a lot of them probably just played with the English cards if they were already uh, going in that direction. All right, so if long story short, if you come across one of those block boxes and you can afford it, power to you. I, <laughs> I, I think the one downside of it is if I were to drop, you know, let's say close to ten thousand dollars on a Hoth Japanese box, I mean, and I spec'd on it and said this is gonna go to the moon, right? The target market for somebody who would want to buy that if it did raise in value, you know, I. I don't know where that is. I, I mean, I would to like to it. think you. I'm sure maybe there's somebody, but generally things go up when you have like sales history of it increasing over time. The fact is, this product just doesn't really move anywhere because the people who have it don't want to get rid of it because they know it's worth a lot. But they're not going to put it on a penny auction either because, like, that would be crazy. Like, I think enough people just don't even have the funds to do it. So you're looking at a very small niche market for people that can afford it, really want it you know, <laughs> and uh, are willing to pay pay that amount and to, to spec on it that it's going to go even higher. You know, yeah, no one's going to want to take a loss on this. It's probably only a subset of people in the in the current, you know, CCG community who would probably even, like you said, have that much uh, dough um, that they're willing to drop to begin with and then even fewer who'd be willing to do it. And I think, yeah, for myself, that's difficult if you're looking to drop, you know, nearly 10 Gs on this because... For example, there's another very, and we'll get to the, some of the other um, booster boxes as well, but there's some of the others, like say some of the reflections boxes. If you think, well, how many reflections boxes could I buy instead of this Japanese Hoth box? What's kind of the general appeal of it? What sorts of cards are in there? I uh, just, Japanese is already kind of niche. Japanese Hoth, because it's so expensive, kind of puts itself into yet another niche within a niche. So I just... I don't know if that would be where I would put my uh, money first at the current price point. That being said, if it was at a lower price point, I mean, it's very rare. It always makes it kind of fun. Uh, I have a few. I maybe have like 30 or 40 off Japanese cards. So I can't say I don't have any. I've definitely mm -hmm. gotten some of the lower hanging fruit, but um, I don't have anything super crazy with that. And <laughs> I'm okay with that. I, I can die a happy man with it. All right. Let's move on from that because we've been on that for a while. What set do you want to talk about next? Cloud City, well, we Jabba's should, Palace, or Dagobah? I should just go sequentially, Dagobah. I mean, we've done this far sequentially. It probably makes sense okay. too, unless you want to mix it up a little bit. That's, uh... No, that's fine by me. So, like, um, the revised sales, what I was saying of Dagobah, have been lower, you know, ranging from 235 to 400, 450 maybe at most. There was an outlier at 525. The limited ones have, you know, climbed a bit anywhere from 250 to like a year ago to as high as like what is this 
eight hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. You know? And even uh, there was one that were almost a thousand dollars in March of early in the year. That's really high. I, I would say fair price for me. You know, five hundred dollars. That's fine. Like I'd pick mm-hmm. that up any day. Four fifty to five fifty probably makes sense for a for limited eight. box. For a or, limited uh, box. For I a limited think you'd be box. Be a pretty good deal if you got that. Yeah. But they have been selling. There's a few sales more recently that have sold in that 550, 500 yeah. range. I've seen them. Some of them I've just got lazy and didn't buy it. But like um, I've been offered to pay it for less than 500 for somebody trying to unload a box. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I, I don't feel like there's a shortage of them. Um, there's always somebody like willing to sell them, right? And of the cards that come in there, like, you know, you get Yoda, Executor, of course, is the big one. Um, there's so many interrupts in Dagobah. <laughs> there's so many, like, cards that are, like, whatever. You know, and, they're, and the rares that are worth from a dollar to three dollars, you can get a singles. It's... Yeah, it's certainly got, you know, the three big hitters you're always hoping to get are Executor, Yoda, and then Son of Skywalker. So those are, like, the big three. Those are the ones people really are going after. And but then wouldn't you... you... But wouldn't yeah. you say like Dagobah is like feels a little more common or more available than Hoth? Yes, and I think part of that, and I don't know exactly the timeline, but Cloud City and Jabba's Palace were like the by far, other than maybe Premier Limited, they were like the two most printed sets. So I think maybe when Dagobah was coming around, you know, they have a new format of like sixty packs of nine cards instead of thirty six packs of you know, 15 with the R1s and all those sorts of things going on. So they changed the format a little bit. So they may have been increasing the print run already at this time. Uh, I do think they increased the number. Uh, they probably are more Dagobah boxes floating around than Hoth. Although I don't know if I'd say it's necessarily more common than say something even like a New Hope. Uh, Dagobah at times can kind right. of disappear from the market, I've noticed. But it does seem like it comes up more than Hoth. Hoth is definitely a little bit rarer I've seen, i found, at least for the limited the uh, revised, maybe slightly a different story. Although there's actually more Dagobah revised than I would have expected. Well, how, uh, yeah, and that's, you is. know, when looking at these sales, you know, we're seeing that the revised is more on the top half of like, yeah. or, the, or the lower half, I guess I should say, in terms of prices for sales. Yeah. I mean, 289, 333, 400, 430, 439, 440. I mean, there are less cards per pack in revised, mm-hmm. right? There's 11 in the limited, nine in the revised. Uh, Correct. for Dagobah, no, Dagobah is nine for each. And actually, the funny thing with the revised, oh, they are both nine. Is you're they actually just going to be getting half the number of cards basically in the revised Dagobah as with revised. yeah, because it's a smaller box. Yeah. Whereas with Hoth, you're basically getting rid of mostly the bolt cards, so you'll end up with thirty rares. And I, I forget, did they get rid of the R ones and R twos in the revised? I don't recall. But basically, you're getting rid of only like you're only losing like six rare cards basically. But in Dagobah, you're getting like half. And it's interesting because I don't think the box sales, when you compare uh, revised to limited Hoth and Dagobah, when you can do like compare them all, I don't think it really reflects that, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, okay, so if we're looking at the price of revised being slightly less than limited, it could mm-hmm. just be a matter of a per card basis where they're actually about the same. Yeah. Um, because the demand, let's face it, you know limited unlimited frankly i think i would rather have the revised day would you know in terms of like oh which would i have feel like i'd have a better chance of grading better um i think the revised would i feel like the white border ones tend to do better uh, or look better maybe because they've taken a second <laughs> shot at it i mean the limited ones are so glossy mm-hmm. um, and and there's plenty of videos that discuss like the card material on them um, it's just weird <laughs> like <laughs> open them like I don't want to touch them with my raw hands like you know a fresh pack um, with the chance of getting something good but even if you get the best cards out of these you know some of Skywalker and Yoda and Executor I mean an Executor graded well could do really well that card will always be awesome um, but still I mean you're really specking more on the box than the cards that are potentially in it if you can get a complete Dagobah set revised or, or limited for like 150 175 i mean it certainly wouldn't really be more than that at this given time um you know are we specking on the box again here like are we thinking maybe there's just going to be less and less of these available clearly people are still opening these to get good graded cards mm-hmm. so we do know that is 
being cut down. And I don't know if that's Cam or JP or herself or who knows, like we know people are doing it. Right. But right. Well, in terms of, you know, time and money, you know, for a lot of people, they have more money than time. So if you really just want to find graded cards, gradable cards quickly, and you have more money than time, this is one way to do it, you know, buy a box and have at it and then get some fun out of it as well. Yeah, I mean, for those who are trying to like complete a set or something, definitely don't buy a box. Definitely just buy <laughs> yeah. singles, bulks, repacks, whatever, because there's plenty of that product out there that's not really used. Because um, I don't think many people are playing with many of the Dagobah cards right. for the most part. Um, final thoughts on Dagobah? I like it. Um... I actually like it because of I, I'm pretty biased. I really like Yoda a lot. So in that sense, it kind of just all by itself just makes the set for me. But um, I think at the current price point, I, I could see the appeal of it. Again, it's it's got this little niche. And I, what I like about um, you know the set Dagobah is iconic for just kind of being swampy and you know where the Jedi train in uh, in Yoda's exiled place. Um, yeah, I think it's got its little niche. I, I like it, but um, again, I think part of that's my bias towards liking Yoda a lot. And if I didn't like Yoda, then I think the set would lose a lot of uh, maybe its appeal. Yeah, because people crack jokes about, I think the, the hardest cards that I always found to complete them, and I have almost three complete sets of, the, of limited, and like mm -hmm. I, have, I have one. I sold the rest of my other revised, but the bounty hunters always came up last. So like uh, Dengar, Four Alarm, like... Those mm -hmm. those I always thought were really cool too. Right. Um, it's cool that they throw those in, but with Skywalker and Yoda, the only Rebel characters, and the rest are interrupts and effects and locations. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like, you know, I'd be hard pressed to really want to open one of those boxes versus like opening a, a Hoth box. Yeah. Um, maybe even a, a but, New Hope. But you brought up, and then the next one that comes out, speaking of bounty hunters, is then Cloud City. Yeah, and Cloud City is interesting because it is very highly printed. Like you know, if you open the Reflections pack, uh, for those of you watching, if you don't know the Reflections pack, it does have a foil card of basically a whole bunch of the really well known or popular cards uh, through up to that point, Star Wars CCG. But basically, they also put a bunch of their leftover cards. When you open the Reflections pack, you get to get a lot of Cloud City cards as one of the cards they usually put in there. Um, there's definitely so the no shortage of Cloud City <laughs> boxes, boosters. I definitely get the impression these are just as plentiful as Premier, um, if not yeah. more. Yeah, but uh, the, the thing with Cloud just, City is I think it does have a lot of like random uh, you know, red cards you can pull, but it does have a lot of also really uh, interesting character cards as well, and I think that's kind of its saving grace as a set because, of course, it has Boba Fett which people captain love. han solo captain han Boba, solo which looks princess great yeah yep um, yeah princess leia it's got lando's the lord say the dark side one it's got the slave one um even the cloud city itself is really iconic it's actually one of the first cards that graded <laughs> funny enough when i was oh, coming okay. back in i was like oh this card looks really cool i'm gonna grade it even though it's like an uncommon but it just you know it's like cloud city um but uh well, yeah, no, the the Cloud City, like the Besman Cloud City, like yeah, cool. those are cool. The dark side being the nighttime and yeah, nighttime, those those were cool cards. I do remember always liking that card. Um, but yeah, because there's not as many. I mean, you have Slave One, but there's nothing really else in the ship wise. You got Bright Hope and Redemption. Right. Yeah, the other ships aren't as interesting. But I just yeah. between those, like you have Boba Fett, which kind of you know he's on the cover of the box. Like he kind of defines the. He leads the definition of the set, and I think that alone pulls it. Uh, oh yeah, without Boba being... Fett in this set, this would totally be a different story, right? Because Boba Fett is one of the most like sold cars, like from mm -hmm. a graded standpoint. I mean, the list goes on and on of how many slabbed Boba Fetts have changed hands, right? Um, and then, and then, like, I think. Um, because of this, the box prices have actually gone up quite a bit from where they were a few years ago. And I think this is one of those things where it could be like... They're all between evolution. 300 and $400 like in the moment. Um, yeah. I've seen them as low listed as like 250 but they have been mm -hmm. slowly creeping up. But to there's me, still plenty available. 
to me, this feels kind of like evolutions in Pokemon where it was a really inexpensive box for a while. Uh, and evolutions, my understanding is that it's sort of like a pseudo reprint of base set. A lot of the yeah. cards are very similar, um, but, but it, it went up a lot in value during the Pokemon boom. Uh, but I think it was one of those sets where for a while people can almost like almost not give them away. Uh, so to me, that's kind of like Cloud City, where maybe it's like a highly printed set, but it has certain fundamentals of it that make it appealing, namely having Boba Fett and then having a lot of other versions of main character cards that look really nice, like Captain Han Solo, uh, things like that. So I can see the appeal of it when it's at the right price point, like because it is so common, it might have a tendency to be at a lower price point. Uh, but maybe if enough of them get open that they're no longer out there, then I, that could change. You know, I will quickly. also say the enhanced cloud city cards are pretty cool mm-hmm. um you have like ig88 with riot gun and uh i think this this is the set where you have um like bosk and houndstooth and ig88 and ig2000 i think um if i'm not mistaken yeah. I'm trying i know to it has the with riot gun yeah i always get them mixed up between this one and java's palace the two yeah but there um, are some there are some cool ones you got lando uh with rifle you got chewy with you know, bowcaster. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's, there's a few cool cards in there too. I mean, I see there's two enhanced sales in there: one for four hundred, one for six hundred. That doesn't surprise me. Um, that would definitely be in the range of what I would pay for on those, just because they're cool. Yeah, I think the even though I think the Jabba's enhanced Jabba's has more high end, uh, like the the rares people might want to Mara grade. Jade and Mara Jade and, yeah. and stuff, right? But uh, but the Cloud City, for whatever reason, seems less common. I'm not sure why. It seems like it, it, there's yeah, less... Yeah, enhanced, enhanced Cloud City boxes, I would say, definitely don't come across all the time. I remember yeah. when I saw one, I was like, I need to buy this because I don't see this for sale very often. There was like mm-hmm. one guy selling at the time, and I know for a while it was not for sale by anybody. Um, those are definitely not common. It's It's... You can still find the individual enhanced boxes available. I think those prices have crept up because people are like, oh, well, this is a pretty desirable card. So if you want it, you got to buy the box at this price. I don't know if they're selling for those. I don't know if the new one's tracking that. This is just tracking the boxes. But, um, you know, I don't think they would be listing them that high unless mm-hmm. they, were, they were selling them because some of the characters don't sell <laughs> that, that much. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny how the it's funny how like there's a big difference between some of the characters on those enhanced boxes. Um, it is how that's yeah. separated because they all used to be the same, of like uh, right. 15, 20 bucks, right? You know, and you're like, ah, whatever. But now it's like, oh, that's a hundred twenty bucks. This one is thirty bucks, though. <laughs> yeah, know? the ones the ones that make sense are the I think the enhanced because there's that whole or sorry the enhanced premiere because there's that whole thing about the distribution of them. How there's like less I think Hans and Leia's than there are the others. But I think for the Jabba's Palace and the Cloud City, I think they're all the same as far as their rarity. So yeah, just I guess people picking their preference of who they who they but want. But like Mara so. Jade is definitely very desirable. Really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. On that one, you know, like the C three PO, it's like eh. yeah, people, <laughs> people don't less care. Poor C three PO. Yeah, they don't care as much. Um, but it is final... interesting. Oh, yeah, sorry, God. I was gonna say final thoughts on Cloud City. Cloud City, I, I like it. Just because of, yeah, I think Boba Fett's its saving grace. And I think it's it has a tendency to fall into that lower price point due to how it was perceived as being a more common set. And I think that can work into uh, your favor if you try to get it when it's at a low price point compared to some of the other sets because it has some good cards in it from a collectability and, standpoint. And I believe it was brought up in another video that Cloud City complete sets sell more than any any other set yeah yeah so it does change hands a lot so there is a lot of interest in that and that could be because of the easier you know entry point with the the price um you could still justify opening a box to you know find some high high grade cards in there because the prices are still decent yeah Uh, but if you were going to complete a set, just buy a complete set. It's less. It's like a hundred bucks. Yeah, if you're going for a set, don't, don't. I mean, unless you really want the experience. I guess it's not too expensive in the grand scheme of things. But yeah, if you just want to. Yeah, because it, part of me is like torn. Like, oh, I could just get a stack of Cloud City boxes and just keep them around. But then I'd feel like, well, if I just opened them, like, there's no way I'd get a thousand dollars out of four boxes of Cloud City. You know, that would be something you'd have to spec longer term on, or you'd have to hit like a ten fed or something, which you might be able to do. Um, 
anyhow. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, what is it? Java's Palace. So Java's Palace. So this, yeah, things. this is this is interesting because I've definitely have more boosters of Java's Palace. I have like a hundred boosters like sitting <laughs> around. I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna open them at some point. But then I keep asking myself like. Even the best rares in here are like a dollar, you know? Like Yeah, it's an interesting so, set because um Funky Aliens. Funky, funky Aliens. If you want to open a pack and you want to get an alien that you know you want to find out all the lore about that you never knew anything about, Jabba's Palace is your set. If you want to find out about the random aliens in uh Jabba's Palace. Um but I think Key it's key cards suffers. in there. Well, it does, so so that's the part of the dichotomy of Java's Palace, right? And I guess on the we can start with the positive for the key cards, which is funny because uh, you have Princess Leia Organa, which seems to have risen yeah. to the top as far as the desirable card in Java's Palace, I would agree. which was not I would the agree. case from players, which is funny. I think even a year or two ago, people were they like, what's the most expensive card in Java's Palace? I don't remember what it was, but there were some good like um playing cards that were like in terms of gameplay some cards that were kind of more expensive like naively i would have felt like job of the hut since it's like his palace that would be the most desirable card but no it's princess leia organa uh probably because you know people like that um the iconics you know can you still call her slave leia but you know like bikini it's, leia, leia yeah it's leia. she's an attractive you know so people like that and that's that's what kind of drives the set kind of like boba fett drives uh uh cloud city you know that bikini leia is kind of the iconic uh well icon from from java's palace so that's yeah. kind of what the set in my opinion kind of lives or dies by is the popularity of that uh card because other than that it has the same fundamental problems if not even more so than cloud city that it was just a lot of it was printed i don't know if as much of it was even opened as cloud city so it seems like there's never a shortage of like java's palace there's booster not, boxes yeah. out there there's not. I mean, there's there's no cool ships in here. Um, you know, there's not as many recognizable characters. I mean, maybe Bib Fortuna in there. Um, I don't know. Salicious Crumb, maybe. <laughs> you know, but other than that, like, there's just weird creatures and interrupts in here. And I don't know. I, I don't think people felt like the same, you know, oh, I'm going to live... I'm going to relive the Jabba's palace experience versus like, I'm going to relive the Hoth experience. You know, it's like very different. Um, it's not like there's a, a story behind that. It's just like a whole bunch of aliens in one place. And then they break Han out and Chewie out. And that's that. Then they move on to take a buddy, you know, like, right. Uh, I feel like from a nostalgic story standpoint, it's harder to kind of wrap your brain around. Like, what are we going to do with these? Cause people like that story. I mean, death star two, Easy, right? Endor, oh, easy. We'll you get can, to those. Those you are can go like to those. But like Jabba's Palace, you're like, eh. I for you know, in, a New Hope. At least you can do the Death Star trench run, if, right? If it's like at a steep discount, I guess it could be. I think it just suffers from essentially having a couple of traits that make it maybe the least desirable set in terms of just it was printed so highly. Um, I guess the saving grace is if you like the Princess Leia Organa, she's kind of you know if you're going for that as the card that you think is going to do well in terms of what people want in the long term, then you could go for it. Uh, it's at a low price point, but I just think that the uh, abundance of the boxes kind of works against it. In I terms will of... say though, there's not many sales of the enhanced job as palace. And I know not as many yeah. people have those. I have, right. I have one, but I remember being like, if I don't grab this now, like I might not be able to get it. I mean, I'm not saying right. you can't get it now. Like it, 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 I think it is, being listed probably much higher than it's ever sold for on here because nothing has exceeded 350 uh, with most stuff in the 200s mm -hmm. um, which totally makes sense based on the population the demand and playability of these cards um, but enhanced is a little bit different story I, if it were me i would spec more on the enhanced boxes yeah yeah certainly if i had to uh, choose between the two even if it costs maybe as much as two job as palace booster boxes to buy one enhanced i'd probably still get the enhanced due to the popularity of cards is like you said like mara jade i think those are the enhanced boxes of even cloud city and premiere mm -hmm. are almost the sleepers mm -hmm. um, i think those will become harder and harder to find uh, as time goes on or whether people open them or not i don't plan on opening mine but you get four boosters and then you get 12 boxes so it's 48 which is what four fifths 80 percent of what it costs for the uh 
the regular um, booster box, but then you get those guaranteed, you know, what do you call them? Like the premium cards, the ones on the front. And right. Some of those are pretty good. And, you know, if you're guaranteed, like if you buy, if you buy the whole box, if they're going to be in good condition, well, I think that'll work out for you pretty well. Yeah, I would. I mean, I, <laughs> I guess I'm giving away where my mind is at, but like, I would, <laughs> if you don't have an enhanced box, like I would probably grab one because they're just, I just don't think we're going to see those. They do look very nice as well. They're nice display. Great <laughs> artwork. <laughs> on the box people Absolutely. think of like you buy a booster box and they're just like this boring box you have like lying around and maybe no, i, no. I kind of like them yeah. still but enhanced i don't think you could really say that about those even so no those are beautiful yeah. boxes um, nice. i somebody asked me part of the star wars ccg committee once that they wanted to promote the artwork on the enhanced um jabba's palace box so they asked me to submit a picture of it which tells me oh. if somebody's asking me that like there's not enough available mm -hmm. or enough people that they know that have the box to take a good quality picture of the artwork. So I'm not saying I'm the only one. I, obviously I'm not, but it's definitely not as common, uh, right. you know, and definitely not on people's radar. Um, okay. Special edition. All right. So now we're kind of to the end of the, uh, the early the era, golden yeah. age, the gold, the old early era of decipher. So this is the <laughs> last set before um, reflections one. Things change. Um, yeah. Special editions noteworthy from the gameplay perspective, of course, because as you know, they like they introduced the objectives and those sorts of things in a big way in the main set. So it just kind of re, I say revolutionized, but yeah, it changed the way the game was played in a big way. And I think from that perspective, it has a big uh, place in the players hearts but from a collecting perspective i think it's a little difficult just because when you buy those booster boxes you only get 30 packs and it's such a large set it like is a not... large set yeah it's definitely yeah. a large set but you, they do have the uh special edition light side and dark side starter boxes they do and those things are too. a brick i don't know if you've seen like the box the the starter deck box for that but that thing is the probably the biggest like <laughs> piece of star I... wars sealed you can have i don't have one handy here but i do have one uh I'm trying to remember if i have handy. one i think i i think i do have one but you yeah know if you have one. i think it's a chunk it could hit yeah, someone with it. I, it's like i'm kind of blanking now it's probably kind um, of not very nice though because a lot of it's air because you know those starter decks are like you know it only has I know 60 I have, cards yeah i know huge. i have the death star 2 one i might not have the special edition one but i remember buying them a lot as a kid because i'm like oh there's so many cards in here i keep buying them but then you keep seeing the same cards it's interesting there's only so many yeah. rares in there but i just thought i was getting a lot of cards for it so i was like intrigued to buy it. it's an interesting set because it has it has a dv darth vader dark lord of the sith so that's dvd lots that he's affectionately known as it doesn't have a luke which is interesting it, it does has, have Ben Kenobi, though. It does have Ben Kenobi. It has Leia. It has Undercover Han. Um, Boba Fett. Jabba. It has Boba Fett, which interestingly, Robot. as far as I know, is one of the only main characters who has the exact same name as another main character in another set. Usually they give him like another title. Or oh, yeah, yeah, name. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're but right. both him and Cloud City Boba Fett are just called Boba Fett, which I always thought was interesting. TK422 is technically Han, right? Yeah, Undercover Han. Okay. Um, yeah. got I think a Star Destroyer, a couple of them. It's got like the Death Squadron, and I think there's like a unique one as well. That I can't remember the name of. Um, uh, all the gold. So you finish out the golds and reds, you know, for the uh, uh, like Death Star trench run, if you will. So you can get all the all the ships, right? And so it's like, interesting you know, too. And I don't know why they did this. I'm sure someone, you know, uh, at, at decipher knows why, but it's the only booster box that doesn't say the force is with you on it. It does say it on the starter deck box, but it doesn't say it on the, mm. on the booster box. Hmm. This, th this set holds a special place in my heart. I definitely remember buying a lot of special edition because I was always like intrigued. I was like always getting new cars and I didn't have a master list. Like, I don't know. I wasn't really mm -hmm. looking at it that way. I was just like, wow, I've never seen this card before. What is, what's the story with this? And like at the time, like, you know, the, the, the special edition movies had come out, mm -hmm. you know, not long ago. So like, this was all fresh in your mind. This was new star Wars to me, right? This was like our chance to see something totally new and learn more about the existing star Wars. Like it was like reignited all over again. So like the nostalgic value is pretty high with this set. And uh, this 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 set also has one of the cards that 
meant a lot to to me job as space cruiser which is totally obscure <laughs> but it was a rare i had in my set and my new best friend at the time who was into star wars cards we were going through our set and i just had cards in a binder i didn't know what was what and he was like oh i don't have this let's trade this he traded me a a y-wing assault squadron which i didn't have but i didn't know the rarity of you know so <laughs> i give that card up and i'm like wait a second this this job of space cruise is actually pretty rare it took me another 20 years to get that card i mean not because it was rare i just i didn't like realize it was not as common as a y-wing assault squad <laughs> you know? and he was like he had gotten rid of it this was before like internet really was being used you know like we didn't have the ebay to just pick up a card you know when we needed it this was like you only saw stuff if you saw somebody else had it kind of thing right um, or if you had the master lists you know from the boxes um, yeah it does now that you bring it up it does have the special edition java the hut who was just called java um, I recall that now in special edition and yeah, that was kind of the, um, what the defining feature of it is when George Lucas was having one of his waves of like, what can I change about star Wars and make look all futuristic to 1999 standards. And that's what was happening. But they had with... some other cool stuff in here that wasn't quite in the movie either. Like mm -hmm. Sam speeder, dune Walker, um, medium bulk freighter. Like there were just some other things in here that were like, I almost want to say we're slightly off screen or like mm -hmm. just just out of touch. So it was just like, oh, wow, there's like new Star Wars in this set, right? Like everything up to this point was stuff that was familiar for the most part. And even if you had, didn't know what it was, you had probably seen it on screen at some point, right? Like this was introducing like new ideas, new places, like stuff we couldn't see, right? They, this is where they really like stretched their, you know, larger galaxy footprint i would say um so this is just a cool cool set yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff in here a lot of non-memorable names of cards and stuff mm -hmm. but it's still cool as a complete set like there's some really neat pictures of artwork and stories of the characters in there i, I did like that a lot i I like the cards in it. I just have a hard time justifying sometimes with the prices the way they are. Like if I were to have like, let's say right now, I guess it's dropped a little bit in price. Like for a while, the booster boxes were selling for, I don't know, like 600, 700, $800. Like at oh, that yeah. price point, I just have a hard time justifying it over other sets just because I know you don't get your full expected value, but because the set is so large, like I don't feel like you're going to get with 30 packs very many of the cards you're really looking to get. Like, are you going to get your DVD lots when you open a box? Probably right. not. Um, so that's in terms of just, even though the set itself, I think does have some very interesting cards in terms of like speculating. I don't really like the boxes themselves that when they're at a price point, that's like exceeds, let's say of something like Dagobah or Hoth by very much. I don't like them because. Yeah. It, it looks like. Last year, the prices had jumped up. I think people were specking higher. They just climbed, 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 climbed until they reached as high as like over a thousand dollars for a box. But this year, it's kind of more leveled back to like five hundred range. Um, mm -hmm. You know, for three, even low as three sixty. It looks like as early as August. Um, that's a crazy deal. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, four hundred, five hundred bucks. It looks like some. It looks like one of those boxes that people think could spec higher so maybe they were all like oh we, we need it and we're gonna go for this one you know like but then they were like wait this recalculated like this yeah here. like I, super to super desirable yeah i just have a hard time justifying over their boxes like if it was in a vacuum and you just said well does it have anything anything interesting in it? i think there's a lot of merits to it i just you know when you compare it to other boxes at similar price points i think it's just harder to justify it at you know at that that's all yeah Complete sets are like mm, roughly 200 bucks, give or take. I Sounds think, about right. right. That's a little bit larger. I mean, obviously, yeah. at that point, it depends on the condition. Um, right. But for 360 bucks, 400 bucks, that's not bad. Yeah. You got a uh, lot of cards. The starter decks, though, you know, you're getting a lot of this. There's a few cards you can only get in the starter decks, but. They're not, there's nothing in there. No, the fixed cards, yeah, I don't think they're anything, you know, to they're write nothing. home about. Yeah nothing right on bad i don't think those are gonna go anywhere yeah, no. they're still plentiful so all right um okay so then we're eagerly jumping into 
reflections, right? So now that we're wrapped up. Oh, I guess technically we are. I was thinking Endor in my head, but you're right. Technically, it is reflections. Reflections so one. So that is, is an odd one. Yeah. That's an odd one for a couple. Of, I mean, there's several reasons why it's odd, but um, I'll let That's you go first. Also, I might have like, I don't know, 15 or 30 minutes. So I don't know if you'd rather like we hurry or we want to do like a part two. I'm kind of partial to a part two, so we don't have to hurry. Um, but yeah, we can do a we can do a part two. We can we can kind of wrap. It I up. like this conversation. I like it. Yeah, so there's too much finish, to unpack later. So maybe we can maybe we can finish out like reflections, uh, Endor and Death Star two, and then we can do like starting with like the episode one for like the later era. If that sounds okay to you. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's do that. So reflections. Reflections has always had a broad appeal, right? Because I think mm-hmm. you know, ooh, it can get cards from any of the earlier sets, even though there's nothing in there that's like you know, hyper rare, crazy in there because, you know, of all the sets that we discussed thus far, I mean, the most exciting cards of all those, all those, all those sets we talked about, Darth Vader, Executor, Boba Fett, um, Darth Vader, Dark Lord of the Sith, maybe Yoda, um, (laughs) you know, what, what, uh, they have the foils, right? Of course, there's the very rare, super rare, and ultra rare foils of reflections. But it's no secret that the f- like the very rare foils, like Wild Things Games, has like a never-ending plethora of because they must have gotten the printing sheets of those foils, so they must have been able to just make cards left and right. Yeah, people based on the sheets they were given. So that is why this is why that set kind of drives me nuts because I'm like. There's so much Reflections 1 foils out there that, I'm, I mean, even getting an ultra rare is going to be over 100 bucks because there's not as, not as plentiful. But for the rest of the rares you can get in these, there's nothing that stands out of my mind. So I'm like, why is this going for like $1,400, $1,500, you know, $1,600, $1,700 as early mm-hmm. as like from earlier in the year? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a few things that work into that. So one, you're right. I think Wild Thing Games, so that's kind of a notorious seller of, I mean, you know, card games, but they have a lot of what used to be Decipher's inventory. They do have a lot of the Reflections 1 foils, particularly the very rare foils, which are contrary to the name, probably the more common ones. Yeah, very <laughs> common foil, yeah. <laughs> um, but they don't, I mean, in the grand scheme of cards, you think of like other card games, like it's really still, even though they have probably, you know, thousands, like in the mid, low thousands of probably most of them, if, if I had to guess. Um, but it just depends, because I think also with Reflections 1, even though maybe uh, out of the foils, they're more common, certainly than Reflections 2 and Reflections 3, they're probably also the cards that if you were a general Star Wars card collector, probably one of the first ones you'd look to get into because they're basically most of the interesting cards from up to that point printed in a shiny variant. And that's kind of what people seek in terms of card collecting. So if they were to come into Star Wars CCG, it's probably the first place they'd be like, well, what do I want to collect? Well, here's all the characters and all the really interesting cards in like shiny form. Like that's probably the first place they would want to go um oh yeah i mean i remember when i was a kid and going to the mall to pick up packs they would be selling cloud city hoth and like dagobah and like reflections i'm like i want reflections Mm because that's cool like i needed cards from the (laughs) other ones like i didn't have complete sets of anything as a kid but it was just so appealing to be like wait there's all of them and special cards i'm like Mm -hmm. this never ends i'm like the possibilities just felt endless and that randomness makes them really fun to open because you just never know exactly what you're going to be getting like it's just it could be anything like i mean it can't really be anything because they there are certain cards they tend to be in there but like you know, within reason and even within those, it could be a lot of different things. So it's just... from my understanding, they, there could be more than one rare. Oh yeah. You can get like, like cause there'll be have, like so. certain slots that are from cloud city, but yeah, they could be like all rares. So, you know, right, right. So they'd have slots for the different sets, but mm-hmm. in those sets, they could be multiple rares. So like that was super appealing, you know, because it'd be like, Oh, now there's a chance to really get multiple cards and missing. And, this is even before getting into like reflections two or three, where they throw in Japanese and like other crazy variants of stuff. So like the idea of like the mix from the early sets and the foil chase was mm-hmm. fun. And I think that even the amount of foils that say wild thing games has, I mean, you have it in other markets. Like this is very prevalent from what I understand in magic, the gathering where you get people who will basically just 
corner the market on a certain card or two, right? And then like these old reserve list cards, like someone will just decide like, oh, I want all of these and they'll just buy them all up. And, you know, Star Wars is a big enough collecting hobby and these things are inexpensive enough. I don't, I, I could easily see, and I think it's already happened with some of the, say the super rare foils, like someone will just be like, I want to buy all of them. And then it was, you know, yeah. all of a sudden they just won't be there. I could see that easily happening. Like one of these days you'll just be like, oh, well, where did all the very rare foils go? And then, you know, <laughs> Star Wars is a, you know, a big enough collecting hobby that, you know, there's enough people out there that if people, and they already are starting to get into some of the other, you know, tops cards at the moment, if they, for whatever reason, get in here, I mean, it's really not that many cards to go around. Um, so. Well, so, you know, from looking from the grading standpoint, I mean, it's no secret that if you wanted to grade a bunch of reflections foils, it makes way more sense to buy a completed reflections foil very rare set from wild things games for $45 than it does for opening up reflections. Pack. If you're so, going for like a seven or an eight, like I'd say most of those VRF cards are probably around a seven or an eight. Like you'd be hard pressed to get anything above that. So there's, those. there's definitely a good amount of off center cards. I think I've come across maybe 10 Ulas, mm -hmm. you know, like <laughs> any given time. Like, well, they come in no batches. It seems like, which is odd. Like you'll get a bunch of the same card off center, like when you open them. And then if you buy it at a different time, it'll be like the other ones. Uh, I think it has to do. Yeah. I don't know what it has to do with. Well, if they're cutting, if they're cutting the cards themselves, mm -hmm. then it's not as going to be as machine precision. Like they probably have the, the, Thing to cut it but someone's going in there putting it in and then like <laughs> you know like essentially like a giant like big paper cutter thing you know mm -hmm. like it's not going to be as perfect if they're doing it themselves and we've i've seen this with currency and other cars like yeah. people would cut, it, cut cut things the way they want to i mean you could arguably take rare cards in a big sheet and just focus on like you know one or two sections of cards and cut them like absolutely perfectly while sacrificing the rest they, of the they might be single-handedly responsible for the all off-center luke skywalker ultra rare foils and reflections one it's seriously the most annoying thing they're all off-center like it's very hard to find an on-center one just a random factoid i thought i'd throw out well i mean given that you've seen like many more of those uh yeah that that is interesting i think eventually we'll come across it, it comes down to the populations right like so sure. if if, you, if everybody submits them, everything comes back seven eights and occasional nines, and then there's like one ten in there. Like that one ten is going to be worth so much more because everyone recognizes like all these were messed up. This is the best one. <laughs> like, and it's very hard to find that, you know, so that there is an appeal to that. Um, but in terms of speculating on the box, I mean, personally, I put a reflections box, you know, between 850 950 maybe is what maybe where i would probably pay for it i don't i don't know if it's if it's worth much more to me in my mind the later uh reflections boxes are definitely worth more but yeah. um i just even if i even i'm imagining pulling you know a few Jabba's palace rares cloud city rares and even a few even if i pull one or two ultra rares and a bunch of super rare foils like that's cool but like there's no way I would come even remotely close to some of these sale prices. So we're really specking on the boxes rarity at this point. In terms of the set cards, I think they'll be a lot better than the ones in Reflections 2 and Reflections 3, where they kind of have probably run out of some of the better ones. Um, probably end up getting like more white border premiere in the later ones, but you don't have the premium cards. So, you know, with Reflections 2 and Reflections 3, you get some non-foil cards that are specific to those packs. With Reflections 1, it's That's only true. a foil card. Um, sure. But I do like it in the sense that you're getting hopefully a good condition uh, foil and most of the ones in Reflections of 1 I've got to say are probably more interesting than some of the ones in 2 and 3 where you have the main characters but after that they start becoming like really random cards it feels like to me. Some of like the, random locations. Yeah, it, it's just like, really random. And I think... Uh, was it Andy Talaga? I just said, I mean, other people probably have too, but basically if you're opening Reflections 2 and Reflections 3, you're almost like setting money on fire. Like you're pretty close <laughs> to doing that. Uh, Reflections 1, you still, I mean, with any of these, you might be doing that in some sense, but I feel like you're closer to coming out okay with just how desirable the foils will tend to be to a general audience. Like when I'm selling cards, like people tend to go after the original trilogy stuff, which Reflections 1 is heavier in. Uh, I mean, Reflections 2 also probably is, but it's it's just 
you know, I think the cards are more the ones that general Star Wars fans uh, are interested in. Yeah, I mean, we'll 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 get into the later ones on a different yeah. talk, but in my mind, it's less of uh, burning money at that point as it is a, a huge gamble. Yeah, because yeah. because, because um, a lot of the rare Japanese cards that people have had through Hoth or Premiere, a lot of them have been pulled out of Reflections. That is true. That's and a good three point. Packs. Um, so there's chances you can get like stupid rare cards in those mixes that you were not banking on at all. Yeah, you know, like, nobody plans you, on getting yeah. a Millennium Falcon Japanese, you know, out of there. But that doesn't yeah. mean it wasn't done. You right. know, and the same goes for you know Vader or Ben or whatever. So in in the Reflections one stuff, we're really just looking at the foils and the potential to just get like a bunch more rares than you otherwise would have. Um, but I feel like there's less of a gamble in there. You kind of have a little bit better chance of predicting your odds and like mm. how that's going to turn out than something like two or three reflections. That's definitely way more up in the air. You could right. get something that's worth, you know, nothing. You could actually get stuff that if you graded could be well worth your time. And I think right. that's why it commands those higher prices. I just, I think in this specific instance, it's less about the cards in it as it is, there's not as many reflections boxes sealed as there are of everything else prior to this. Right. Like, I'm not saying people don't have a bunch. There probably are, but well, it was a really certain... fun product to open. So probably a lot of people right. So a lot person. of them were opened, you know, and I don't blame them. Frankly, yeah. I would want to open it too. Um, and I think TCG Chase actually just opened a box recently, but he got he yeah. must have gotten a later one because he said he pulled all Cloud City rares. So right. it's kind of a forewarning <laughs> of you know when when this box was printed, like you don't know if you're going to get really crap or a God box. You know maybe there's yes. God box stuff out there essentially. I've heard legends, quote I've heard unquote, legends, legends yeah. of the God box. It's it could exist. Um, I think that gets wilder later. Okay, it's good um, to know than it does earlier but overall i i like the set it's cool i'm glad i have a box of it um but i feel less inclined to want to open this just because i don't think i'd i don't know i'm pretty biased i like it i like it in terms of like i have quite a few of my i really like it in terms of like speculating just because it has really good fundamentals to me even if the price is a premium like a while ago like a year or two ago i don't think it was much more than say some of the other set boxes and it's kind of risen and i think that's a big part of it is just because it has probably i mean you hope they're in well condition good condition i would open uh, i would open boosters yeah but i don't think i'd open up boxes I well i guess i already forgot you are you also got that giant box topper thing on top of it which that's is true in good condition um didn't even remember that have you but, considered grading any of those I don't. I know they don't grade well, but it's expensive, and yeah, I don't think. I mean, it's hard to pull them even out of the boxes in good condition, and I just don't think many people would want to buy it. So it's just one of those things. Maybe I'll do it one of these days, just to have one on my own. But I don't think I'd buy it with the intent of trying to sell it. Um, yeah, because I think you know more like when we sp specifically PSA is known for grading like all kinds of funky yeah. shaped stuff, <laughs> jumbo cards, thicker yeah. stuff. Um, Star Wars doesn't have any thicker cards. We have yet to see like one of those mini cards or, or stickers nah. graded. I don't know if I think they JP will. JP tried to grade wants. some. He tried to grade some sort of insert, and they wouldn't do it. Um, yeah, it I saw that. Size. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Not to say they, you know, they might not consider doing it, or somebody might not consider doing that down the road. Um, but I don't, you know, I I think one of the weirder things was I saw. Uh, PSA nines of just sealed clouds. Oh yeah, pack. there's that person on eBay. I saw that. Those. Yeah, and they're like a hundred bucks. <laughs> per, I'm like, well, I mean, I guess you're specking on the pack. I mean, but like, it's interesting. It is interesting. But it, but the the interesting thing was it said quantity next to it, and you could order. Yeah, they really went all in on those. It's kind of cool. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a neat novelty. I wouldn't say I'd encourage people to go out and just grade all their packs. Because I think it's neat to have like one, like in your per PC, just like, hey, check this Maybe out. That's I have what a graded it'll be pack. Like, people do do that where they'll have like that nice display. Like, you've probably seen it where people will get that like one of each pack display. And I do think that looks pretty cool. It could look clean. I I, yeah. I, I wouldn't knock it and I wouldn't put it above anybody because like I would do yeah. stuff like that maybe. But I was just like, 100 bucks for a Cloud City Seal or PSA 9. I mean, if it was a PSA 7 or 10, it's like, who's to say like, 
What does that even mean? For, <laughs> but speaking pack. of, so I do like reflections. Um, but the next box is the what, Endor Endor box. That's one. That's an interesting one. It's really interesting. Because you want to wrap up with that one? Uh, let's see. I guess like, we could do it because we have that way. We'll leave like Death Star too. Yeah, we'll, really we'll leave. That's, that's very exciting. That's a good one. So we'll we'll end it with Endor, and it's a really interesting one because. When you think of Endor, I mean, there are some main character cards, but it's funny because a lot of them were reused in the Death Star 2 starter deck. So, like, there really aren't that many ultra desirable main character cards in Endor that are non foil. You have uh, maybe. Oh, uh, well, yeah. You have, like, Daughter of Skywalker is probably the one that wasn't reprinted. And I guess technically you can look at the dates on General Solo to see if it's like the one from Endor or the yeah, one from yeah. the starter box, but people don't really pay attention to that. So he's just like, you know, $3 or something. Cause, <laughs> cause that, but yeah, like the cards in Endor that are desirable are probably more like the gameplay ones. Like Walkling is probably, you know, one of the top ones. Uh, yeah. The year. interesting thing is like all the Imperial side is just generic things like corporals, yeah. lieutenants, troopers, sergeants. Then on the, uh rebel side uh really 3po is like the main one i mean you have daughter of skywalker as yeah, well yeah it's the Leia and card yeah chewbacca of kashik yeah and general solo right so yeah. like there you're there is mon mothma in there too i guess you could say yeah, yeah, the mon rest mothma. are like the rest are like ewoks right <laughs> and then in, and then in terms of like the the vehicles i think one of the coolest things were some of the imperial vehicles the tempest scout one through six um in endor are cool because they're harder to come across like even if you were looking for one like a single right now you may not be able to find it it may not be available you know so like those are definitely hard to come across and i just thought mm -hmm. those are cool those were some of the later ones and they've held their value um even in played condition you're still gonna you're still gonna have to cough up at least 10 bucks to like get one of those all right it's a single you know, so like in completing the set, it's not the interrupts, it's not the imperial characters or the effects or any of that. It's I find it was a lot of the the vehicles, which is unusual because a lot of the other sets, like the vehicles, like lift tube, like Uber can't, like nobody gives a shit, uh, essentially. But like these ones were cool. Um, but and this also is a set that is almost like. I wouldn't even say it's like a standalone. It really was designed to be played with Death Star 2, mm -hmm. you know, in conjunction to like play out that. It's an interesting scenarios. set. Yeah, because then it also has the foils. And I believe the foils for Endor were actually developed before the foils for Reflections, if I recall, which is why they're so unique looking. Because for those <laughs> who aren't familiar, they're very glossy and rainbowy looking. Well, they cover the whole card. They right? cover whereas the whole card. Whereas yeah. Reflections isn't the whole card, right? So It isn't, but I think even the foil itself, it's like blinding. Like if you try to take pictures of it, it's like it's just it's intense, lighting yeah. up everything. Whereas the Reflections foil is even just parts where it shows through. It never, and never if I'm not mistaken, out. every like not every pack has a foil in it, right? So that it's, I think like, one in nine packs the right. rare so was replaced with a foil. The rarity yeah. of just pulling a foil, period, was part of what made opening Endor packs really exciting. Yeah, and I, like, if, from what I've heard, that's why actually a lot of the boxes were opened, because when it came out, people were really excited about that. So a lot of people just opened a whole bunch of the boxes. So that's one of the reasons why Endor boxes are very rare. So um, the price point between them has pretty much stayed the same between like 850 to yeah like it hasn't really gone up in price at all it hasn't really gone up but it's maintained that strong value and, mm -hmm. and a lot of that has to go with the foils for sure i mean the 3po foil and there was another one too uh okay. general solo those are the two general ultra solo rares foil. on the or like ultra rare equivalents on the light side i mean the those dark in, side are those yeah. in good shape are uh you know high price demand yeah, cards. some are fluctuating between like 50 and 100 bucks depending on you know the time of year and the moon or whatever graded um, nines or tens though i mean there's no reason why those wouldn't be commanding a, a much yeah they're, because they're desirable characters they look they're desirable great. characters and they're vibrant looking cards they look great in the case they're really nice looking yeah i, I definitely like you know for having complete Endor foil sets, there will always be a demand for that. Uh, it's definitely good to keep keep one of those. Um, 
or hunt those down. Would you open up Endor booster packs? I think the price oh, man. giving right now, they're going for anywhere between 30 four to maybe as high as 40 bucks a booster pack right no now. way i i definitely wouldn't it's definitely a difficult proposition um unless i'm just looking to open but if i were looking to open packs for enjoyment i'd probably go with another set unless i'm just really need endor cards for some reason just because again the expected value is so low like i think there was a joke not a joke but it was a thread on i think one of the star wars ccg forums a year or two ago where someone was talking about possibly mapping out packs and endor and they're like what is there to map like there's just <laughs> nothing in there so um yeah i don't think i would yeah. open the packs at endor for you know anytime in the future but um perhaps yeah, i remember the, just yeah. like imagining like oh what rare do i need to complete my next endor set you know it's like some random named ewok or like mm -hmm. some random lieutenant or sergeant that's like forgettable you right know? that was usually what i found myself hunting for i'm like what am i looking for i'm like some obscure thing it wasn't like the obvious things that come to mind <laughs> um as opposed to like death star 2 maybe it's a little easier to call out some stuff um it's a cool looking set though it uh, is cool and it's thematic you know, the i do like definitely that made this, yeah. yeah definitely definitely um, so yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look like there's much room on the Endor set as it stands right now from like a specking standpoint in it, terms of like boosters. I, I like them, but I'm hesitant to open one. Well, um, in terms of, if I did, price, I would know it was a loss. Yeah. Yeah. In terms of the actual boosters, I think, yeah, I don't really know what the value comes from. I think a lot of it's the rarity of the box just because they are kind of more difficult to find. Like they, they are more prone to disappear from eBay for longer periods of time, although they do tend to resurface. At one point in time, I want to say it wasn't really all that different in price than Death Star 2, although it's kind of diverged, which I guess makes sense because well, we can get into that in the next video. Um, so, you know, the perks, they're the nice things about Death Star 2. But if, if, if it starts to kind of lag behind in price much beyond, say, some of the more premium ones, I might say it might be good to get on it just for the sealed box itself, just because they are kind of rare. Um, yeah. But but it is difficult from the fundamentals of what's actually in the in the box or the packs, because, yeah, you're not <laughs> you're not going to recoup your money uh, by shredding the box, which no, might be I different mean, than shows... a lot of other ones. It shows there were 10 sales last year, seven sales this year. Mm -hmm. So not many sales uh, yeah. all in all. And I think a lot of that has to do with just the general entry price point. Like most people aren't like, oh, I'm going to go buy a thousand dollar box. Like what am right. I going to get? Like um, they're going to be going to be much more inclined to be like one of the earlier sets we discussed because it's just easier to get into it and feel like you can get a box. Right. If you're already going to so drop much. a thousand on a box, most of the people, if they're just kind of getting in, you know, for a box or two, are probably going to go for something more like Reflections or Death Star 2 or something, you know, something more like that, I would imagine. So final thoughts on Endor slash anything we've discussed up to this point. Um, anything I, that comes to mind. <laughs> there is something about the Endor box. I don't know. They're kind of small and... Yeah, I don't know. I just really like the thematicness of it. Like, just feels nice and Ewoky and <laughs> things like that. So it does have a little, you know, niche appeal to it. Um, but yeah, for boxes in general, I really like them. I know to some it might, you know, they say like, oh, you got to free the cards. That's what they're for. You got to, you know, use them or play with them and watch them. And I get that. Um, you know, I like opening packs. Um, I hopefully one of these days I'll get good at playing again if I can get over my fear of playing against people who will wipe the floor with me on gamp but uh no i i um yeah i really like collecting the boxes just because again you know the memories of going to lgs's local game stores back in the day cracking packs and just having that there just feels good to me even if i were never you know going to crack them and occasionally from time to time you know i find a a reason to crack a box of packs whether it's to make some cards for repacks or whatever um, I, I do think it's good. Uh, I do think the one caveat, as we learned from that whole event that happened, was that last year, this year with Pokemon and that fake first edition box, is that maybe in the future, if prices do go up, maybe we will get bad actors, <clears throat> sorry, making fake boxes of Star Wars CCG. But I think as of right now, we don't really have to worry about that. There's just not enough money or people in here at the moment to worry about that. So in some sense, I'm a little bit more confident that what I'm getting probably hasn't been resealed 
um, it's probably more likely to be authentic than maybe later on, you know, maybe it'll be someday it'll be difficult to ensure that the, you know, the reflections three box you're getting hasn't been tampered with. So in that sense, I'm happy to get them, you know, now while, while I can. Yeah, I do recognize, I mean, that's almost like a totally different conversation in of itself too. <clears throat> I have seen in the Pokemon world and in the tops world of either people posting stuff for sale that's not actually in their possession or uh, tampered with modified cards. I mean, there's plenty of videos. It doesn't take long to find one where someone's ripping open a card and be like, this is fake, you mm-hmm. know, or the stuff that's produced in China. I mean, you're talking about like an industrial scale con on yeah. general population. The scale isn't here. The the money isn't in it for Star Wars customizable card game right now. Hopefully mm-hmm. that's not something we have to tackle. Anytime. Right. Hopefully we just stay nice and wholesome and clean and everything's legit and people, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but just to stay vigilant, I mean, we right. have a lot of sharp, sharp people here, you know, good right. collectors. If you're not sure, there's certainly enough people to ask and get second opinions on, which I've been asked, and I've certainly second guessed mm-hmm. myself and, and reached out to other people in the community. So luckily, it's a pretty like, most people are like on a first name basis with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> like at I mean, point, usually for a lot of the big stuff, yeah, there'll be a person coming in occasionally with a closet full of Star Wars CCG. Like, what is this? What's this worth? My this is my dad's stuff. Um, but yeah, most of the time, you know, you probably know the people who have lots of the things you're looking for, so it's all good. But yeah, let's let's wrap this up because this is a solid two hours. I'm mm-hmm. sure this uh, people almost are like, on the mark. Yeah. Still talking, but yeah, no, this has been really good. We're, we'll definitely pick up on the rest of the conversation on the rest of the packs and stuff like that. Um, and then I look forward to seeing you in Seattle. Yeah, time. thanks for reaching out, Kyle. That'll be awesome. Yeah, you won't be too long from now. Maybe we'll do our part two then or before then. I don't know. We'll work it out. Either way, we'll do something when you're here. And yeah, thanks y'all for watching and uh, making it worthwhile for us to do this. Uh, greatly appreciate the opportunity for you to have me on, Kyle. Yeah, no, thanks for meeting with me. And I would say for anybody else who's watching this, this was two hours. This was really long. Um, if you guys think this is way too long or you hate this like let us know and we'll try and modify into chunks but uh if you don't mind the long conversations mark and i certainly don't and we'll certainly continue the conversation on the topics thank you all and deuces yeah take care guys <laughs>